Hello everyone, it's Friday night and it is time for the Weekender once again. On this week's show, Justin gets involved with Vanguard in Normandy, Ben gets very excited for the Guards of Traders Toll, Warren gets involved in Terrain Fest, and I take a journey beyond the Mountains of Madness. On top of that, we also have a prize. In fact, we have three from Steamforge Games, the new two-player starter set for War Machine Mark IV. There are some restrictions which we'll pop down below uh, because shipping is only to selected countries, but we'll tell you a bit more about that later on in the show. Now sit back, relax, because your weekend starts here. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Weekender. I'm joined this week by Ben and Justin. Hello. 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 Having fun. Good oh. weekend. <laughs> I've been I've been painting space apes. I say I've been painting Ooh, space apes. Fun. I've been cleaning space apes up with a view to painting them, because uh, I fancy doing some star schlocking in the not-too-distant. Oh. Uh, people really enjoyed the unboxing for that one. So yes. fun to see that game into camera. That'd be yeah. cool. Yeah. There's a there's a lot of cool stuff coming out these days as we roll into nearer mm. to the festive season. Yes. Always it's, it's almost like they want your money. Delivering. Yeah, it's almost it's <laughs> almost like they only want you for your money. It's good. It's good times. <laughs> That's what my mother told me. So yeah. what, that she only wants you for your money? No, that every other woman wants me for my money. So, yeah. <laughs> and Boo them! I don't have any. <laughs> uh, no, I I have sadness this week. Oh. My fridge has busted, so my old friend that has kept me fed for so long is going to the skip. Oh no! Shocking sadness. Do you guys not just to keep storing things in uh, underground cellars full of salt? Uh, no, no, no. ice houses. No, I know what it looks like yeah. our writers are potatoes, and everything's made from potato. But no. <laughs> Ice house that is cool. a horrendous stereotype and a lie. It's propaganda. <laughs> I believe you, Ben. Uh, I just keep all my stuff in a cupboard. If it stops yeah. moving, then uh, you need to eat it immediately. And if it starts moving again, then it's time to throw it out. <laughs> That's just how it works. That's I work in the moving scale of good, good stuff. Yeah. It is, it is very this this is why Jerry always has a blade in his pocket. Always. To right. end his food. <laughs> uh, I think we should probably get into the show. Before this gets mm. on any longer, uh, mm. I did promise a while ago to do more blogs, and I figured for our indie of the week this week because we had a wee luxy at Midgard last week. Uh, yes, if we people did. are mm. unaware, the writer um, of Midgard is James Morris, who has his own little blogular uh, called Mogsy Makes, mm -hmm. which is you know clever, fantastic. Um, I, I like it for several reasons. First off, uh, he was harangued into doing it um, right. by by Jerry. Uh, no, no, not by me. Actually, um, the writer of um, "To the Strongest," where you should have a blog oh, cool. for all your stuff. Why do you not have a blog for all your stuff? Uh, why would I want it? Uh, people will come and look at it and click on it. Uh, I don't care. <laughs> but he was harassed into it anyway. Um, so. There is a little bit of a breakdown. He does a mixture of historic and fantastical. Um, no science fictional, uh, which is good because it's the worst of all genres. Um, but <laughs> we will we'll, we'll have a little peruse. Um, for people who did see Midgard last week on the show and want to know more, there's a whole, as you would expect, page devoted to it. Um, so whether you're Looking to pick up a copy, you can get it via the Lardy's Rice Fitz Press, or if you're in the EU, Caravan Sarai Publishing, the people who send me war game soldiers and strategy on a regular basis. God bless them. Mm -hmm. To be fair, I do send them money the other way, but you know, <laughs> quid pro quo. Um, <laughs> there are links to his videos that he's been doing uh, with Rich from the Lardy's about what Midgard is, what the forces contain, 
some scenarios and their first playthrough game went up as well. So it's a great way, as James said, uh, it's a great way of getting a bit more depth and detail about Midgard if you were thinking about it. Um, because, right. you know, there's a ton of games out there these days. And how do you know this one's for you? Uh, I did see somebody commenting that it was random movement. And why was I interested? I, at no point have I heard that it's random movement. And then I watched the Let's Play, and it's not random movement. You liar. You fiend in the comments. <laughs> fake, fake news. Yeah. Propaganda. Find, find yourself it's a everywhere. bucket of water. Put your head in it. Do not come up. <laughs> um, so uh, yes. I'd love to have an army for this. It looks so fun. Well, you so. can. That's the great thing about it. Take your saga force that I know you have. And uh, you mean the one I haven't touched since my bad beat? Yep. Uh, and then yep. double that, and that's more or less uh, a Midgard force. Uh, you just oh, need fair. little movement trace to put them on. That was the, the token he set we were saying. And then there was one. Remember I said there was a 3D printed one? So that's the yep. STL'd version Ooh, if you want it to be a bit more lovely. Sutton Who. Fancy. Mm. Styly. I mean, put Warren to work. Yes. Um, but yeah, so Midgard lives here as well as other things, but we're going to have a look at the other things. And it is mostly just, here's stuff I've been working on. Um, I first discovered, I wonder if it'll be in here. I first discovered Mugsy Makes via the medium of uh, Dan Mersey um, when he was releasing Wigliff, uh, his travel 18 mil stuff for the Age of Penda. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. James did some absolutely superb little bases of the figures. I was like, oh, this is cracking. Seen them on the face page. And I was like, oh, he's got a blog. Uh, so <laughs> so I, I snuck down that way and found him. Look, totem pole. And mm-hmm. a lovely man with a massive war axe who's about to batter the average living jeebus out of people. Mm. Yes. That's how they say hello. Yes. <laughs> um, so if I go Dark Ages... No, let's start at the top. Let's go ancient first. Um, it is just a case of model porn. This is why I come here. Uh, for inspiration pun- of what I do. Do not post do, that into Google, folks. Always put that into Google. Always. And don't so you can see so. here things like the, uh, the, the monumental piece of work mm-hmm. uh, for this. Uh, I think it's a DBM game. Uh, the boards with the huge cliff on this are insane. Like, yes. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's the thing. Um, obviously, James and, and the group he plays with, there's Simon Miller, the man responsible for uh, mm-hmm. To the Strongest and for this blog. Thank you. Um, but yeah, you, know, so you get a nice breakdown, bio report, who would have thought it, of what was happening uh, along with the the pictures of the game ongoing. Uh, and I just I just really like this. Because, you know, even though he's written rules and done games design, him and his mates are just gamers. Just like mm-hmm. you and me, only they have painted stuff. <laughs> and they possibly have a warehouse to store all their boards in. Because if they build them all like that, that's going to be a hell of a storage beast to work with. Hmm. Ah, you know, maybe they just ceremoniously dance around it and smash it with hammers after they're done. <laughs> they I hope not. Jerry like, says, as the Joyce and his attic are creaking. I like to think that they split it up between them, like uh, yeah. fragments of an amulet, and then they bring them together for uh, All game right. days. So it's not so. like a timeshare. You get it this week, I get it that week? No, no, yeah. You get segments, and then you bring them together, and then like a big flash of power happens, and then you have an amazing game. So. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very 80s cartoon of you, shit, man. Yes. But it is the way to go. I mean, the, Lovely uh, stuff, though. Yeah. Mm. Which is which is why people like stuff like uh, ancient battles. Just look at them, look at them with their delightful square bases. And so, the rule systems they're using for each of these games is it ones that they've written, or is it from around the industry? Oh, it's all over creation. This one, oh, this fair. one may actually be a to the strongest, but hmm. not sure. Uh, no, were they? I can't he said, see. Yeah, he said to the strongest there. Yeah, but the it, longest, he was assisted by was Simon because? Miller, the author of... Ah. Oh, that we were using for the game. Yeah, okay. So that one is to mm-hmm. the strongest. Um, mm-hmm. But it, it just depends. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, when there are certain games around that you can just go and, and grab and will do for multiple periods, 
And if your group is playing them on a regular basis, it tends to be what they, they use. Because in a lot of cases, these are being shown off at um, conventions and, and things like that. So, and- yeah. So, oh, so they're UK based? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Sorry, just- I was just wondering if they were in the Americas. Mm-hmm. No, look, he's got a little hobby horse. <laughs> That's, that's how he writes it. He couldn't afford a guy with two coconuts, but he couldn't find them. Obviously, no way of getting them to uh, Saxony. Uh, well, at least it doesn't have to go to Camelot. It's a very silly place. <laughs> uh, it's wonderful stuff. Are you still saying no to doing Dark Ages, Jerry? I've never said no to doing Dark Ages. I, oh, Dark I, Ages I, one, I, I have somewhere in the region of several yeah. thousand Dark Ages. Oh, which figures. one was it you were saying no to? Medieval? Medieval. Yep, uh, medieval. <laughs> It can jog on. Not happening. <laughs> the painting's fantastic by, uh, by James. James. Yeah. I always have mm. seen what he does. It kind of matches up really well to the... Um, well, I like to think that it matches up quite nicely to like the foundry method. It would, like You know, that sort of classic painting of, of the historical stuff. Yeah, and then also Kevin Dallymore's the three yes. layers. Yeah. Yeah, but then also with a lot of the bits that you see done for um, Footsaw and uh, and their studio painting as well. Mm. But uh, yeah, it's really really nice stuff. Very inspirational. Gets you. Uh, I, I really I like things like the commander bases that turn into slightly more diorama based affairs. <laughs> yeah. um, the the one pair of nice sods things. laying below yeah. the heart, going, "Please don't crush me." <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So having those, I think, is a really nice touch for um something you see in historical games you don't necessarily see them in fantasy and yeah. sci-fi ones i would say um i mean the painting's old style but it's in, super clean in fantasy and science fiction depending on the game obviously for midgard it will be different but mm. um your heroes generally fight and do things yeah whereas in ancients historical in general they were there for command, which is yes. why they yeah. often end up on round bases to show that they don't get involved in the fighting. Um, and because they're on a little round base somewhere and you want to go, well, this is my clever guy who's in charge of everybody, then they get a bit more love and attention um, mm-hmm. since they should theoretically stay on the table to the better, better end. <laughs> I Look love that thought. That's amazing. Somebody wow. set fire to my village. Please set and help. Actually has thatch on the roofs. Mm-hmm. It's the way to do it. <laughs> no teddy bears were harmed in the making of this board. <laughs> Predates that, I think. But it just goes to show the, the wealth of time and effort uh, that they put into it. Uh, and then, obviously, you get these majestic-looking boards as well at the end where you yeah you get a, a really, not just a, a really good spectacle, but a, a fun game to play through. I think he was saying mm-hmm. for this one it was Warhammer Engines. Um, which is, it was my one of my segues into getting back into ancient warfare. It was Warhammer Ancients, and James wrote the Arthur book for us. Oh wow! Um, but I do like how he says uh, it, it was a rather clunky system. I might go back to it at some point. You went, yeah. I think these days, with the plethora of better systems out there, going back to Warhammer. Probably not. Well, including his own. <laughs> yeah. now oh, I mean, so. modern systems with old miniatures still work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the great thing about historics, <laughs> is uh, once you've got them, they'll fit into anywhere. Without Never wanting for miniatures. Very sure. Very true. I'll show you some uh, some filthy Word the Roses pictured oh. here, mm-hmm. stuff I will never paint. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the banners? Are you intimidated by the banners? No. Not intimidated by anything as far as painting goes. <laughs> never have been, never will be. I painted wood grain on a 15 mil bolt thrower back in the day just to annoy one of Whoa. my staff members. <laughs> Too far. Um, I know it simply comes down to I, I refuse to do another period. Mm, I've got fair, far fair. too much unpainted stuff already. Not going any further. <laughs> I mean, the miniatures for these are gorgeous with that nice heavy metal on the, the fully armored knights. Yeah, it's lovely. I like this period, War of the Roses. It's very good. Battle boards in the new um, Age of Chivalry saga book for the War of the Roses. Ooh. Ooh. And suddenly Technically, ben they're not broke. listed, 
blunt at the back of the book. It goes, if you want to play War of the Roses, use this and this for York uh, and Lancaster, and then just pull those battle boards out of the thing, and then here are your army lists that you'll be able, you'll be feeling with them. Very so, nice. yes. Still it's, not either, it. it's either late medieval or it's uh, English Civil War. That Those are the two periods that I'm always on the edge of diving into. So. We'll have, we'll have to see which inspiration strikes first, I guess. Mm. Uh, the the uh, temptation for me is always ACW. Well, said he did that as well. I never had El Cid. Well, very annoying. Off to Flea Bay? <laughs> no. Oh, Christ, no. Those books go for a ridiculous amount and for something I'm not right. going to play. Ah, uh, fair. Mm. Oh, wow. happening. I love that many. Oh, that's oh. beautiful work. Well, that's Caballero. Yes. We've seen their oh, work I wonder before. where they got the tents from. Mm, those tents are good. Yeah, they remind me of stuff you can get from First Core. They're probably not, mm, but uh, they, they yeah. may well be. Look out for I mean, a flock of sheep. In which case, that will answer your question. <laughs> yes, uh, it will. Yeah. I mean, we're in a, a golden age of the gaming industry where you can find damn near anything your heart desires. Pretty much. Look, yeah. tents as far as the eye can see. So much tending. <laughs> mm-hmm. Camper than a sail at millets. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, just reminds Oops. me of playing Dragon Age that one elf I stole the sword from him every single time <laughs> from various manufacturers good luck Skipper oh, god damn it in which case uh, yes well, probably first yeah. Gordon who knows where else from yeah. James does watch the show so yeah. we'll, probably that's true. Those, those, those are really lovely I'd love to do tables like this you know something you big epic on a grand scale nothing's stopping you <laughs> that's the great thing about Working in the industry and, and having mm. access to a room that has massive tables. You can, yes, you can yes. do this whenever you want. You just, just do it. You can do it tomorrow. You do it right now. Get up, walk out of the room, start <laughs> it immediately. Editing start to do. Out trees. I, have, I have worky things to do for the community to make sure they get their lovely, lovely videos. <laughs> shocking. Absolutely shocking. Um, <laughs> have a quick look at the fantasy and mythology. Where would you like me to look, Ben? Uh, Anywhere, I think that top one. Tolkien, although obviously, you Red surprised Book of me, Elfing sir. Is also an amazing range, but um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's just lose the Hatfield. So yes, uh, Tolkien's Middle Earth. You've got dwarves and elves again. Another choice. Where could you possibly yeah. be going? Yeah. Weirdly, I'm going to say elves this time. Oh, oh the Yeah, you are. So because I want to see if he's done some first stage stuff. So, uh, we has the first stage, <gasps> da, da, da. and it's using the oath mark stuff, which yep, is what well, I you was would. using as well. Why would you not? So, yeah, mm-hmm. lovely stuff. Now, this is quite interesting because Middle Earth is going stuff. through a little bit of a change to a new edition uh-huh. in the next couple of months, and a lot of people are worried that the game's not going to be the same and all that kind of thing. Oh, I've heard they're shot themselves. Uh, yeah. Well, they haven't really. Well, again, it's, it's, it's the best being, system that Workshop runs has at the minute because yeah. they never touched it. There was a, yeah. a certain amount of they left f- it alone. Fear that things were disappearing because they never made models for them. Yeah, so things rules. are going, but um, but you know, I'm sure the game will be fine. But anyway, as people have said, there are plenty of other systems for you to play Middle Earth in. Mm. Oathmark is one of them that I think is very very good, and obviously you can see the miniatures that they've used here as well. Mm. They're very Tolkien-esque. But also Midgard Heroic Battles, as proven by a recent game that they played at the other partisan, mm. would be fantastic for Middle Earth stuff because they did a huge Hobbit battle of five arms. Battle, battle of five, five armies, armies, yeah. Armies. Uh, I don't, um, so, yeah. Because the way Midgard is set up, where it is your army with your heroes and then you have that sort of might phase where legendary things are done and challenges are thrown out and it means you've got a certain amount of heroic leaders without yeah. it becoming full on hero hammer where they're devastating an army by themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a good way to do it. Which works with the Tolkien-esque vibe because yeah. the heroes are great and powerful, but they're not, you know, superheroes. Yeah. They can still yeah. be stabbed up by a mortal yes. blade. Yeah. yeah. If needs be. Uh, do the, do the last wound on a Mimax, still only count as one. <laughs> exactly. And then it falls on you and crushes everything. Yeah. Do you get including an Alessio Cavatori? Do you, do you get to count the splash damage from it landing? <laughs> <laughs> it only catches one, but it landed another fifty. 
Yeah. There's I still no, there's remember. no timber rule from the giants in uh, in Warhammer now. And no. I still remember going through the extended edition of Lord of the Rings just to find him in the Perrys as dead we're hearing. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone who wants st- to, you can go find that yourself. Yeah. I think it's still doing a profile again? picture on something on Facebook as well. So, yeah. yeah, He's the happiest dead soldier I've ever seen because he's just <laughs> laying there going, <laughs> I mean, Lord of the Rings is yeah. great. <laughs> uh, Very good. There is a little blog part at the end uh, where he does roundups. Mm-hmm. So there's uh, a couple of things in there. There we are, but more hey, importantly, hey, we got a there's, mention. There's the link to that massive battle of the five armies, uh, and also oh. um, he talked with Mike on his podcast um, about his gaming and how that's gone as well. That's worth a listen to uh, if you're interested in hearing about gaming and game design. And considering you're here, I imagine you probably are. Um, mm. So yeah, uh, really nice. It might blog. be nice to reach out and see if we could get him on for an interview. Mm, sure, be cool. Yeah. It's always doable. I have been known Jerry to talk, talk to people off. on occasion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. I'll, I'll most likely be editing it, so you won't get half of it chopped out. Sorry, that's don't even. <laughs> it's coming still back that it. bit. Is yeah, it? Because yeah. if it doesn't, I've it still is. got the file. I'll make a YouTube channel and just put that up. <laughs> put it out raw. Yep. No, it will be coming back. It will be coming back. Uh, but yeah, no. so if you fancy. Uh, Getting some inspiration for fantasy or historics, uh, reading some battle reports and just generally seeing what James is up to. Uh, it's worth checking out Moxie Makes. Yeah, very Definitely. cool. Very right. cool. And I have to give this a read through the weekend. You've got other things to read this weekend. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Next weekend. <laughs> no, no, it's all right. He's, he's cracking that whip, folks. I am. <laughs> something, something coming soon. <laughs> right. I think it's time to take a look at some news. Coming to you from the center of Northwestern Europe. Covering board games, war games, card games, and all that sh- you love. It's the Muck f- News. <laughs> okay, then we're going to be kicking things off uh, with Vanguard Normandy, Ben. Mm, yes. Uh, so this is a new Kickstarter project, the first Kickstarter project from Warlord Games that is going to be landing on their uh, platform next week. Uh, on Tuesday, so the 5th of November, remember, remember. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a new board game from the folks at uh, Warlord that is for one to four players, which uses um, some of the classic me- mechanics from Bolt Action, but also a whole host of new mechanics and stuff that they've thrown in, because obviously it's a board game, for playing out um, big battles and campaigns uh, from World War Two. Uh, Vanguard Normandy is kind of focused on 1944 and obviously that kind of push by the US Mm. uh, against the Germans throughout Normandy, as you would have imagined by the title. Um, And it's kind of got two different modes of play almost. So you can dive in and play it solo. uh, And there's like a full on campaign design for that where you play as the US. Although I'd imagine they'll probably do something in the future where you can play as the Germans as well. That could be very cool. Um, or you can dive into the full up to four player mode of the game where you can play through uh, a full campaign historically based um, using the Germans and the US fighting over different maps and stuff like that, as you can see on those lovely hex grids, which look Mm. lovely and gorgeous. Um, Should note the images that you're seeing here are pre-production stuff. So this will be different in the final product, but this gives you an idea of what they're going to look like anyway. So there's a whole host of little tiny plastic figures that you're going to get in the box. Um, and they're in green and grey plastic, so you don't have to paint them if you don't want to, Um, if you're a board gamer, for example. But if you do like painting, then, of course, you could go in with uh, your paintbrush and your airbrush or whatever and get them ready to go. Um, One of the nice things about the game, as I said, is that it's um, kind of a love letter to the bolt action mechanics in, in, in a way as well. So it has the dice in the bag mechanic and the order dice, which is cool, but it also has uh, pinning and stuff from bolt action bolted into this but then there's lots of other bits and pieces in here that have come from the board game world so resource management um getting troops onto the tabletop paying for troops controlling objectives and all that kind of thing games will typically play out on these hex grid maps that you can see are quite modular and you'll be it's all about controlling objectives rather than necessarily just wiping your opponent off the board although of course that's a legitimate way of fighting 
says the Germans. You have area <laughs> control if there's no one in the area. Well, that's true, yeah. yeah I mean, the, the guys at Warlord actually were teasing this at UK Games Expo were, this year. Yeah, yeah. We, we did yeah. get a little chat with them. Mm-hmm. One of the interesting aspects of this, it's almost got some RTS elements yes. in it, like Command and Conquer yeah. style, where mm-hmm. when you're taking control of areas, that changes how you're deploying and stuff, yes. which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which I think is a really nice touch and mm-hmm. um, should bring in, as you say, like a lot of that RTS crowd and those board games as well. Mm-hmm. I also like that this, they've said that there's a really nice element of replayability in this as well. So obviously it's the campaign to play through, but because of the modular nature of the board mm-hmm. and the way that things might play out throughout turns and the variety of different vehicles and things they have access to as well, um, the scope is quite big for this game. And hopefully it'll be one that people dive into and uh, and have some fun with. Um, We'll know more about the game come next week when they mm-hmm. launch Kickstarter. However, there is a uh, sign-up link. So if you go into the link down below in the description and follow it through, if you sign up to that newsletter, there's the chance that if you pledge next week, you can get yourself a lovely little dice mat, a little dice tray thing, which is lovely. A nice bonus. So, yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> the, this, one, this one has me excited. It looks like it's going to be a really interesting way to play out some battles in World War II that's quite different to yeah, yeah. we've really seen yeah. before. Yeah, I think um, Warlord seem to have learned from their previous step into the board gaming world, which was combined arms, and mm. they've kind of iterated on that and really tried to push more off the board game side of things and embrace those mechanics a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how it plays out. But yeah, looks really good. Reminds me of Tide of Iron. It does. Tide of Iron and Memoir 44 <laughs> had a little baby with an order bag. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, and away we go. <laughs> yeah, we'll be fascinating to see where that one goes. I played Tide of Iron to bits and their expansions uh, in I North played, Africa and, and played, uh, Eastern Front. I played two games of Tide of Iron and got wiped off the board both times and decided <laughs> I would never play it again. Oh, it is a, <laughs> it is a brutal game depending on the Utterly scenario. brutal, yeah. Um, but at the same time, uh, a very good example of what you can do with a hex-based game after you've done the narrative yes. side because way, way back in the day when Fantasy Flight did it, they used to have a little resource page where people would make their own scenarios. So they would go, Indeed. you've got these components because everybody's got the same components in the box. Put out these maps in this order, put out these objectives, put out these things, and here are your orders yep. of battle. Mm-hmm. And there's no reason why the community can't do the same with Vanguard. Um, mm-hmm. All they need to be supplied with was, I think, Fantasy Flight give like a generic map and then the like the PNG thing so you could go drop your objectives and orders and blah blah blah. That'd be a good idea. Yeah. If Ward would do the same thing then um it's got an awful lot of uh community support in the background then where people will just start going, here's a you know, you've done these scenarios but then here's an interesting uh battle that you haven't covered. Here's how you would recreate Mm -hmm. it on the board. And also, I mean it's subtitled Normandy, so mm. I assume they're probably going to do Vanguard, Stalingrad, and yeah. all sorts of things. So yeah. Berlin <laughs> around a bit. Berlin, yeah. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> even if, if you want to to take this and actually move away from it, it's not really all that hard to actually go to some of the websites that let you make hex grid maps and just start no, building yeah. your own scenarios so you can fight wherever you want. Yeah, yeah, definitely. definitely. Time will tell. Right. Yes. Uh, next up, we are going to be taking a look at some interesting bits and pieces from Crooked mm-hmm. Dice for 7TV. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm absolutely loving these. And I assume this was given That's to so me good. because of how much I love the cock. Uh, and this is uh, maybe. Probably, yeah. probably my favourite of all um, uh, of Lovecraft's I th- writings. I his, thought it was uh, Jerry secretly has non-Euclidean shaped uh, gems <laughs> in his back pocket. <laughs> it's, it's a whole range of Arctic or um, Antarctic, in this case, explorers uh-huh. um, from Crooked Dice. So you can throw a whole Galvi bucket load of uh, poor unfortunates to their death in the frozen barren wasteland of the, the southern continent. Um, so a slew of packs coming for 7TV for this uh, starts with the Antarctic explorers, um, all in their classic 1920s garb, I suppose you'd say. So um, they're big, big mittens. Big mittens. <laughs> Uh, lots of <laughs> lots of layers. That's key. Uh, they're going out. There may be some time. This is a, a scientific expedition, <laughs> obviously, led yeah. by uh, mm. Dyer. Led the Antarctic expedition from Miskatonic 
in uh, the thing. So probably one of these. Um, Someone's going to give you a tick in the uh, Lovecraftian fan column. Now, yeah. so it's good. <laughs> the Husky <gasps> Sled Team. The Huskies, uh-huh. obviously, the base camp close to where they landed, and then a second team went out um, to set up a, a camp further towards the mountains, uh, which got absolutely brutalized and a load of Huskies. And one, well, Huskies went missing. Some got killed. One was dissected alongside a member of the uh, the expedition, possibly this guy. Oh, dear. <laughs> Who would dissect him? I was sad when they cancelled the movie they were going to make of this. Yeah, it's because they might come back. They so, just don't want yeah. Del Toro to make a good film, apparently. So, <laughs> shocking. Uh, Antarctic mm-hmm. Heroes. Ah, sadness. Out there, mm-hmm. do the do. This man's got some sort of crazy piece of kit. Who knows what that is? Then, obviously, for seven TV, it can lean into the pulp side of things as well. So, it not can. everything has to be yeah. actual, genuine. Yes. Sometimes you might just want to bring your own little mini flamethrower or welder or bit of yeah. kit. Some form of new MacGuffin to see of the day. <laughs> How about that very, might be his name, MacGuffin. Yeah. MacGuffin. It's very Peggy Carter. <laughs> MacGuffin, McLovin. Yeah. Peggy Carter, Idger. That is Idger very Peggy Shield. Carter, especially with that hair. Yeah. Yes. Um, so that's your, your sort of your heroes and expedition. Um, this guy is clearly that's a hero. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a little bit uh, <laughs> the thing on the left-hand side. Well, yeah, that's that's mm-hmm. Mac all day long. Uh, mm-hmm. This guy down the far end, he's he's gone wrong. He's gone full Gebney. Never go full Gebney. <laughs> oh. They are absolutely terrific. Uh, yeah. And then there's even some wee heckles. Uh, Alice, Alice, the lovely snowcat. As Smokey once asked, Alice, Alice. And then I'll let people at home complete that, right? Because it'll get beeped if I do it. <laughs> uh, lovely bit of resin kit. Oh. So you can walk your way out of, out of Dodge very, very slowly. But at least you're moving. Yes. And you're away from oh, the elements. I, I, I hope they'll make a ruined version of that. You know, you come back out of the cave and someone has just shafted your vehicle and now oh, you're walking home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's resin. That'll work. Also, um, also a perfect vehicle if you're going to try and find a shipwreck uh, in, in the ice and snow uh, with, with Nick Cage. Yeah. So, yeah. yes, also good. Yeah. Could be. Now Could we be have that. some ne'er do well looking fellas. Yes. Uh, Hitler's favorites, the Anna Nurberda. Goddamn Nazis. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Off, <laughs> off to Antarctic I mean, looking for the entrance to the Hollow Earth or yeah, Atlantis. I mean, I mean as, as Harrison Ford says, why is it always Nazis? <laughs> well, because they tried communists one time and nobody liked that film. That's why. <laughs> fair, yeah. fair. It's Al- alien. Alongside uh, the villains. Um, I mean, the officer officer fun. staff are interesting, uh, mm. but they're not a patch on this guy with some form of Tesla coil proctology going on. Yep. It's, uh, mm-hmm. He's seen some shit. He Literally. has. <laughs> they have found something buried in the ice, Commandant. Yeah. Yes. These, um, w- these, w- these ne- look like they need to be clobbered by uh, Hellboy as well. Uh, uh, I mean, you see them 20 minutes later and they've all gone a bit bibbledy after seeing that. Talking yes. about bibbledy, yeah. Well. <laughs> oh, that is, that is, oof. Wow, Everybody's we... favourite elder thing. They already do shug off. I think they've done some sort of mm. mutinous mound a long, long time ago. Um, so there is, there is what Lake Dyer uh, found when they went hunting for uh, the, the missing, or sorry, Dyer and Danforth, uh, oh. when they went hunting Lake's missing party members. Oh. Um, you know what I want to do with this? Yeah. I want to take it and put it yeah. into a clear block of resin with a little frosting on it. You find this frozen in the ice, leave it uh, alone. Don't touch it. Uh, that would be cool. Roll your sand. Yeah. Uh, um, but they found 10 of them. And six of them got up and left. Roll your sand. You lose one anyway. You lose one anyway. Even if you pass. Oh, <laughs> I want to play some Call of Cthulhu so bad. Call of Cthulhu is so good. Oh, uh, it's great. That's absolutely fantastic. There have been a few different companies have done elder things over the years. That's a, an interesting mm-hmm. take on it. Um, I think because of the big walkie feet. I've, I've never pictured mm-hmm. of the big walkie feet. More sort of a, a hopping thing. I like it. Uh, any board for this needs to have an outhouse that one of your characters can just barricade himself into. Uh, it won't help. <laughs> yeah. Especially not if they're Cthulians around. <laughs> not meant to. It's just meant to make him feel better. Uh, save the last bullet for yourself. 
Yeah. The aberrations and the little baby. Cthulian. Mm-hmm. Cthulian catchlings. I mean, oh, it's best man. just not to look at Cthulians at all. Mm-hmm. Ever. Regardless of what continent Stamp you're on. on them. Stamp, Stamp on, on them. It all. That's how you lose your boot. Now you're running in the snow without a shoe. Oh. They're obviously... Get the flamethrower then. <laughs> they're obviously nailed on for anywhere. Now you your shoe is on fire. Yeah. Doesn't matter if you happen to be. Whatever exploring. happens, I, fa- I appear to have failed all my tests with you. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that that's what makes it amusing. Yeah, you can explore wherever you want. <sighs> Cthulians will find you, so it doesn't matter if you're in the desert they or in the snow. Mm-hmm. Um, they're always just trunking oh, around. The little egg pods are creepy. That's Ooh. Chinese cabbage. They're not egg pods. Google that one yourself. That could be a cool, twi- a cool twist on Tremors. Do a Tremors scenario, but it's actually Lovecraftian monsters, oh, not just that could weird be good. earthworms. Yes. Uh, do you remember the... the well, what? Who hurt <laughs> yes. the penguins? There would be no penguin. Well, yeah. wait, we know what hurt the penguins. Mm-hmm. They hurt the penguins, and now the uh-huh. penguins look like that. But don't worry, right. they're blind. Yeah. So as long as you don't make too much noise or get too close, you should be able to dodge past yeah. them. Uh, they like are fish. also huge. It looks like something's wearing it like a bad suit. Yeah, yeah, they're great, aren't they? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> That's a nightmare fuel. It, it is one of my favourite stories, full stop. It is my favourite Lovecraftian story. Uh, and it's so popular, they even made a Batman version. And if you've not seen The Doom That Came to Gotham, f- find that. It came out as a comic book. I think they made it into like one of those animated comic movie things for the kids. Oh. As well, so if you series. don't like reading, right, I'm going to have to remember that. Um, you can do that, but it's it's great. It it fits so seamlessly with um, at the mountains of madness. I keep on Very saying cool. beyond, which I is mean, the the campaign, um, which the is most an amazing. Powerful campaign. person in Gotham then is the Joker because he don't give a. <laughs> he's just like oh, no, no, he's he not funny. No, not by a million miles is he the most powerful one in there. <laughs> It, well, it, it the only people them. that are safe are the insane. Uh, no, no I, I, I don't know where you get this idea that they're I, safe. I'm going to go check it out. There's nothing <laughs> safe They're already crazy, it. so it shouldn't affect them. No one's safe. No one's yeah, safe. You, you, you're, I'll, you're coming at this from the wrong down. angle. If you're, if you're insane, therefore you're safe? No. If you're insane, then you're just still going to be eaten anyway. Just <laughs> like you're just closer to San Zero? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. it's not a race to zero. Yeah. It's uh, trying not to be killed by the star creatures, and unfortunately, the star creatures are coming on <laughs> mass. Um, but yeah, terrific uh, set of stuff. Uh, if you want to work. take things into the south and do a bit of the old uh, exploring for Seven TV, they also, if you like fantasy, they're on Kickstarter at the moment. I know this because I backed it, and it's only got three days left. Um, so if you fancy the fantasy genre guide. Um, and grabbing some extra bits and pieces that will be sort of exclusive to the, the Kickstarter. Um, and then that, stuff, you, you, need, yeah. you need to go right over there now, uh, cause we're not talking about it on the show. Um, but yeah, do that. Genre guide, loads of miniatures. You can get Krull. It's great. Krull. Mm-hmm. Right. Krull. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Next up then, Justin, mm-hmm. we've got Leviathans yes. of a different kind. Yes, so dragging you kicking and screaming in the most wonderful and loving way possible back to World War II, <laughs> our, our friends over at Battlefront are releasing a new supplement, Late War Leviathan. So this is expanding on the what-if scenario if World War II didn't end in 1945 and you pushed on and started to see some of those bigger, beefier, mad scientist-type vehicles that were actually built. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously we're going to see so things like the mouse, uh, but we're also going to see things like E100s, the tortoise. So everybody is basically bringing out those big mad scientist projects. And I think this is a really fun idea. So like seeing the IS-7 starting to roll out from Russia. In fact, one of the most terrifying pieces of footage I have ever seen was a Pershing versus a Panther in Berlin. Right. There's actual footage of a, a tank duel between these two vehicles, and it's just like mind-blowing. Uh, but overall, I think it's it's going to be fun for people to to start exploring further in to what would have happened. You know, would the the Russians have started rolling on through Germany and going, oh, oh no, you helped us get here. We're halfway there. We're coming for you now. <laughs> yeah, what do you think yourself, Ben? 
Yeah, I think it's a really good idea. Um, obviously, Battlefront have, and Gale Force 9 by extension have been exploring this period with um, other games. So World of Tanks. With Clash of Steel and World of Tanks and all that kind of thing. Yeah. And sort of explore those ga- that period of history, but with their smaller games. Mm-hmm. I like that they've now bought this supplement out so that you can explore it with the core Flames of War rules mm-hmm. and obviously just make use of the stuff that you already have for your late World War armies anyway. Yeah. Uh, and just bolt on some new stuff. And I like that it's not just the tanks as well. You've got some more of the experimental weaponry in there. Mm-hmm. So with new tanks, obviously people need things to destroy those tanks. And so you've got new weapons teams coming out for all the different armies yeah. as well and stuff that was experimented on to yeah. deal with such things yeah. as the mouse and stuff. So Yeah, I mean, I remember a weird one I saw. They took like uh, the German assault rifle and stuck an mm-hmm. infrared lamp on it. And it was this big, massive <laughs> infrared oh, yes, lamp. And it's like, yeah, what yeah. the hell? The, the vampire system. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they they ruled. They, yeah. they had quite a few of those actually because they also had one that was mounted on a half track. Um, mm-hmm. So they're available yeah. in Flames of War already because I've got a set of them from the Germans. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but yeah, the they're so weird and wacky looking though. <laughs> there, there are things in Flames of War currently, like the Pershing, for example, where there was only five of them on the ground, um, and. I didn't even think any of them had seen combat. The fact that you've seen footage of one of them actually fighting a panther is, I, is amazing. I, I can so, hunt it down because someone actually did a stabilized version of it. Wow. Yeah. So these vehicles that um, that are available in some of the lists, which were never more than paper uh, panzers. Or was that a uh, pattern? So, hunt it down. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see them sort of expanding because the likes of the Pershing that was supposed to come in and then didn't really until Korean War. Um, the likes of the the later variants of German armor, um, because obviously in this mm-hmm. Germany doesn't fall in forty five, so they're still going strong. Um, mm-hmm. Will it see a change in the sort of order of battle? So your Sherman is no longer your main battle tank; is it replaced by mm-hmm. something else? Um, yeah, just bits and pieces like that. They can play around with it a bit more. I mean, I I do know the the Allies were terrified of the the IS tanks when they were rolling out. Because they they were just so like, crazy looking and just so good apparently. Mm-hmm. Well, well Germans weren't particularly fond of either. Works on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, I think I think there there is a return to sender there, please. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, there are there are full new formations for the U.S., the British, mm-hmm. the Germans, and the Soviets. So, mm-hmm. if you fancy taking Flames of War to the next level, yeah. you've mm-hmm. got that to dive into. Which is cool. yeah. I would be <laughs> so. curious to see if what if if like some of the other countries started getting back on their feet and some of their late war stuff was coming into like the French. Mm. Well, you never know if this does well. Maybe we'll mm. see them. I would love to see some of the that. Other minor nations, as they call them. So, yeah. yeah, you know, see what the Italians were coming up with. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Sorry, get, Italy and China. Maybe they flip. The- <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was Japan up to? I want to know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, exploding bombs in the islands and creating Godzilla. Yes, <laughs> how that goes. Down. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, yeah. Yeah. moving away from what ifs and into fantasy once again. Mm. Uh, a whole yeah. slew of stuff coming uh, from Sarissa yeah. and Gray for now. Mm-hmm. So, for those who have been uh, following the news and stuff over the last week, we've had some really fun new stuff coming out of Gray for now and Sarissa for Guards of Traitors Toll which is going to be the new fantasy game that's being developed by Gray for Now and Graham Davey. Um, Guards of Traitor Toll is a game set in the eponymous Traitor's Toll, where you're going to be taking on the role of guards who are running around the city trying to stop all sorts of mischief from happening, including backstabbing, rogue wizards, cabbages being stolen from vendors and everything else in between. Yes. Uh, and that means that you're going to need... being put up. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't hurt the innocent civilians, though. No, no, because if you do, then everybody gets in trouble. So it's kind of semi-cooperative, which I think is a really fun sort of twist on things. Uh, but to do that, you're going to need a really nice urban board to play in, and that's where Sarissa has come in. And so we've got to see a few more of the um, new terrain sets that they've developed for Guards Ooh. Traitors Toll, or Tolling Chester, as they've called it. Tolling Chester, on there. yes. Yeah. Um, so these are just a few more of the the nice buildings, especially with all the extra detail, things like water wheels and bridges and everything else like that. As you can see, all of the buildings that they have been doing are all done with this pre-coloured, um, pre-printed designs on them. Mm-hmm. So it's MDF as per normal with Sarissa, but then you add on these colourful facades on the outside and you get this wonderful look, as you can see here. Mm-hmm. We even oh, have some. Has some. 
That's is that ex- almost exactly the same building as the one that's on screen? <laughs> nearly, <laughs> nearly. It's, it's yeah. nearly, but not quite. Um, yeah. In fact, I'll just very briefly push in. Uh, big- so <laughs> this is the uh, the bank slash rat house. Um, yes. Yes. And I've got a couple of the other ones that I've, I'm building at the moment for unboxing, so you'll see them in the not-too-distant future. The important things to keep an eye on are the little um, wooden ends, I suppose you would say, that, like the, right. the sort of the buttons. Oh, yeah, the, the locking lugs. Yes, because they are interchangeable. So if we go back to, in fact, we'll do the watermill and the forge workshop. So the house behind will be a house like I've just shown you. This front and part bolt on the, ah. bolts on and then can be removed. So the system itself is modular. So you don't need 50 specific buildings. You can pick up right. two or three or four packs. And then sometimes you'll put one piece on. Sometimes you'll take it off to make a row of houses without a workshop or without the water mill. So you end That's up a really with a nice modular job. set of yeah. buildings that allow you to keep constructing different parts of the city without having repetition of always having to have a water wheel on the table. Just yeah, take the water wheel part off, yeah, so you, leave you the have bridge that, off. that core structure. And you've got the building behind. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So this Very is, nice. this like is part and parcel of it. So things like the, um, even things like the, the balconies and the buttressing and the like, all the walkways, yeah, walkways, yeah. click on, click off. Um, so mm-hmm. it should give you a lot more diversity for table builds and modularity within that. Modularity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, it, it's kits yeah. like this that I think are the absolute best for like beginners in our mm-hmm. industry. If you're just getting into it, you don't know all the skills for like building big bits of terrain or painting terrain, doing something like this and just getting something that looks decent done on the table. Perfect. Yeah. I, I was particularly taken by the new like castle wall sections and stuff that they designed. So there's this mm-hmm. one, and there's like a jailhouse that they've done as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, th- I really loved the multi-layered nature of these is great. Cause I think that's really nice for adding height to the game, yes. mm-hmm. especially in a skirmish game where you want that kind of element to it, but then it also helps to tell stories as well. So, you know, they're small things, but you see the little cage on the side where they can put someone that they don't particularly yeah, like, and the you all the little jails underneath the bottom, obviously yeah, the, the halfling. Yeah. The, and then the little also, naughty boy box. Yes. And then also, if you go back to the full town wall section, mm-hmm. I love that you can tell that it's a fantasy thing because the towers have got that inverted look to mm-hmm. them, which you don't yeah. normally see in historical towers. But obviously, to make it fantastical, you've got that element built in there. Mm-hmm. And what's quite nice about the lore of Traitor's Tall is that they've said that these sections of walls and stuff aren't necessarily just around the outsides of the city. You find them inside, bridging the gaps between buildings. So you could have it that maybe a couple of guilds perhaps have access to each other through these um, walkways on these city mm. walls. And while they might be somewhere that a guard might potentially have you know, been once, now it's just watched over by people who are like um, high-ranking merchants or something. So yeah. you can have some really good fun with the narrative of things with these. Yeah, and, so of course, you, they're yeah. all bolt-on as well, so you could add the buildings to the end and stuff. Yeah. So. yeah, so you have your slums in the outer ring and then the upper crust yeah. people are just living in like a gated community on the inside. Exactly. Yeah, familiar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Musk would live there, yeah. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, shot um, fired. Uh, but, yeah, so some really nice terrain coming their way. Mm. A lot of people have said um, it's a shame that you can't, like, there's no interior detail to these. Yeah. But specifically in the rules, Graham has always said that he doesn't want you to be playing inside of buildings and all that kind of thing. Yeah. Because mm. you never get to see all your models playing out in their games. So these are effectively there to create the atmosphere of the table, and then you're playing it out on the city streets. Mm. Obviously, you can then do stuff within buildings if you use things like the walkways and the towers and stuff, if you really want to do that. But there's pu- purpose behind the building of these particular buildings and why they've been built in the way that they yeah, have. Yeah, it's, so, it's building a city, not nearly... individual buildings. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. Oh, you see, I would nearly do a scenario in this where you've got like a Jack the Ripper figure just playing through the game and you're all trying to capture him as the That'd big bad and then all your little yeah. crimes are happening at the same time. Yeah. You never know. Maybe that'll be a scenario of Graham's listening. <laughs> I mean, something like that. Having a big bad that's just like worth all all the kudos. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, as well as uh, the train, we also got to see a couple of new miniatures as well that are coming out. Um, so over on the Facebook page for uh, Guards mm-hmm. of Traitors Toll, or the Facebook group, sorry. Yes, lovely. Uh, every time they hit milestones, Graham releases a few new miniatures and stuff that are coming out. So these are one of the expansion packs that's coming. 
So it gives you kind of like your guard captains almost, I would imagine, for use in your games. You've got a mounted version there and an on-foot version too, which is quite nice. Yeah, just the handcuffs Uh, chained onto the saddle so that if you've been caught, it's just like you're coming with me and you're just dragged along with the horse. (laughs) Pretty much. Uh, So you've got one of the expansion sets that's already been shown off. uh, And then there was another preview of some of the other things you can build with the plastic sets. So War Games Atlantic are doing, I think it's two packs Mm -hmm. of guards. So you've got one that is a guard set. So you'd be able to build armored or unarmored individuals to be your guard retinue. And then the other set will be for kind of hangers on and miscreants and traders mm. and merchants and everything else that will pop up in your games. Citizens. And this just shows off some of the citizens, not mis- not all miscreants. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so this just shows off the breadth of stuff that they've been working on. And I, I just guess. love how the game looks in this kind of yeah. atmosphere that they've built for it. Um, obviously, and I'm fairly sure that Gray for now and Graham are particularly aware of this. There's a distinct disc world Ankh-Bor pork feel, but oh, even if they didn't it intend it, if you wanted to, everybody has it's, been it's overlaying it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We are, we've forced our way <laughs> in there. Myself. Elbows. Yeah. And get the, out. Yeah. You the are thing I the think I love most is see the guards image. They're not yes. all like these big, buff, chiseled chin no, comic book characters. Yeah, well, you, yeah, you can see who ate all the pies. You can, yeah. <laughs> That's how you get access to certain parts of the city by feeding him particular yeah. goods. Pie with <laughs> named meat costs. Oh, so he is very much bribable. Yes. So um, some really nice stuff coming out mm-hmm. from uh, War Games Atlantic, Sarissa, and Grey for now as part of this, this neat new partnership. Um, and they've been doing it for a while now, obviously, with... Um, Zero to hundred hours, and, yes, and test of honor and all sorts of other games. So it's it's definitely one that's working. And Graham, I believe, is pushing to try and get the game out before the end of the year. Mm. So fingers crossed. Looks like it's going to be an absolute blast. Yeah, can't wait to play it. Looks really mm-hmm. good fun. Absolutely definitely. cracking stuff. Dibs on right. that. Let's play. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll have to see. I promise nothing. <laughs> uh, next up, we're going to take a look at some War Machine Ben. So yeah, we've got some new miniatures coming down the pipeline for Crix, who is the, the latest of the factions to get added back into the mix for War Machine and this new edition, this new revamp of the game. Uh, a whole host of um, sort of bonus accessories and solos and terrifying, nightmarish creatures that have been designed for Crix. As you would expect. Hey. <laughs> they are led, or at least this little. Um, bonus uh, addition to Crix is led by the Iron Lich Commander, um, who is this wonderful mix of the fantastical and the technological, which I think is one of the great selling points of War Machine. Um, uh, he, his character, he's such a dirtbag. <laughs> and uh, he's, uh, as you can see here, sort of floating forward, bale fire dripping from every corner of the miniature which is always lovely man the crix designs in the artwork for war machine is just so good like it's so nice to be bad um, i still have my ripper plushie <laughs> uh in game uh he's able to kind of slink his way through enemy lines and uh reap the souls from those around him and then bring it back in order to feed the rest of your forces on the tabletop and give them bonuses which is always mm. nice to see Talking of reaping terrors, we also have these night terrors, who are very, very nice new miniatures. Very dynamic. Love the the poses on these. Really like the fact, like, like the fact that you get that element of negative space in there, which is mm-hmm. a thing that has come out quite a lot when it comes to undead miniatures of late. Mm-hmm. Uh, very nice. Love the big blades on them and the harridan sort of horsey heads as well. It's very, it's very much yeah, there with the like- previous. Crix release the Necrofactorum. Mm, um, yes. They have yeah. uh, wraiths in there where, because they're 3D printed, mm-hmm. there is nothing in their chest cavity or up through the neck mm-hmm. into the helmets. So they're the helmets floating. Yeah. You can look right yeah. through from one shoulder to the other, and then the gloves are That's really nice. sort of free floating. So they're yeah, yeah. they're they're making Beal the most burning. of the 3D printy bits of it all, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Beal fire burning in some form of necro furnace. Yes. <laughs> uh, these miniatures, very good in game as well, um, have the finisher rule. So they're very good at taking down uh, miniatures that are already wounded. wounded. Yeah. Um, which is a very nice bonus as well. Very good yeah. to see. Uh, moving on, we have some of the experimental stuff 
that Crix has been getting up to. So as a lot of people will know, they like playing around with poor mortals and turning them into terrifying living weapons. Yes. And that is definitely the case here with the sludge thralls. Um, so these are your massive undead grunts that have been sort of pumped full of uh, toxins and poisons galore. And they now walk forward with what they call bile cannons, which they spew nasty things all over their enemies with. Mm. And then when they get in combat, they even have ripper blades on the front so they can tear you to pieces. And what's a nice little bonus is that when they die, they explode and shower you with poisonous gore as well. More, so, more bile. <laughs> all the bile yes. all the time. All yeah. the bile all the time. That is, yeah. That's a good way of doing it. Yeah. This this was always the thing with Crix. They were always that body horror sort of reanimator style creations. Yes, definitely. And you, did, you get that in spades with this, which is really good. Mm. Um, if you're very much more on the melee focus side of things, then you also have the Mechanothrall Brutes. So again, these are hulking creations that have been um, affixed with technological weaponry. In this case, you've got the Steam Fists, mm. sort of harking back to the steampunky style of uh, Imaren and the Iron Kingdoms. As you might imagine, very, me- very melee focused. In fact, almost exclusively so. Uh, and they can soak a lot of damage on the way in both from uh, shooting and melee, and then they just absolutely rip everything to part, pretty much. Even if oh. you're a warjack, I would and be And then explode. These. And yeah. then explode. Oh, you can imagine yeah. them uh, exploding <laughs> a warjack. <laughs> One on each limb. Yes. Uh, just do some WWE moves. <laughs> yes, that would be cool. Um, but some really nice new dy- dynamic stuff um, for Cricks there. Uh, they are available separately as pre-orders right now, but you mm. can also get them as part of the Necrofactorum Auxiliary mm. Expansion Bundle as well. So if you want everything in one place, mm. you can get that. From I'm the very curious to see what their cohort's going to look like. Mm. It'll be really fun to see where they go with the development of uh, the faction as a whole, actually, and sort mm-hmm. of where they... If, <clears throat> if they start to potentially add in more of the um, named characters later on down the route as well, so it'd be good to see some returning uh, faces and maybe some some new ones as well. I'll bring back Healy, my favourite. <laughs> and every old War Machine player now hates me. Yeah. Uh, talking of War Machine, just a reminder as well that if you are interested in getting involved in the game, there is the two-player start set, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago now. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe a month or so ago now. But it's still up for pre-order. Going to be out towards the end of November. Comes with whole new hard plastic miniatures <laughs> for uh, getting you into War Machine with Kador and Signar, as opposed to the resin um, that we've been seeing popping up in pre- in the the previous sort of showing for Cricks there. So these are all hard plastic miniatures that you build and they're ready to go. Uh, Signar comes with Major Alistair Kane, Deuce, the character Warjack, the Black Turtink, Turtink and Bastion Falk. Uh, and then on the Cadle side of things, Cadle Forever, Smash, Signar, screw them. <laughs> uh, we have Zahara, Vikul, Goran, Lazarenko, the Hounds and the Razor Warjack as well. So you've got some really nice stuff there for you to dive into. Really nice dynamic new miniatures and a showcase of what Steamforged are looking to do in the future um, because eventually, obviously, we'll see them moving to doing a lot more plastics yeah. um, and stepping away from the 3D printing and the resin as well. So, so yeah, very nice Ho- stuff indeed. Hopefully we'll see Supreme Commandant Eresk come back. Mm. He was always a fun one to play. That would be cool. Um but yeah, definitely some really nice stuff there for War Machine if you're planning to get into it, either with Signa or Kador, or maybe if you want to go down the Crick Street, you've got some options there as well. And of course, we have the competition as part of this week mm. where three of you, how mm-hmm. nice of them to do this, could get your hands on the two-player starter set. Can I be one of the three? No? Okay. <laughs> okay, maybe not. <laughs> uh, uh, the, the one to watch for is whatever they bring back, Menoth, that flamey, flamey goodness. Mm, Menoth will be really fun to see. And also Circle Orboros. Oh, yeah. Werewolves, man. Yeah. Need those. Like troll Bloods. Yeah. You know it's Troll Bloods. Only people who went for Troll Bloods. Uh, have we already seen some? Bloods, troll Bloods. Troll We've bloods, seen troll some of the Troll Bloods. Yeah, the pirate ones. The Troll Bloods, Troll Bloods, Troll Bloods, Troll Bloods. The Brian, Brian Blood <sighs> Marauders. I bet you were uh, a Brian, Brian Blood Blood Marauders. <laughs> dive, my Troll Bloods, dive. That's what we're all uh, after. Like the charts that are actual hammers, yeah. Mm. This is a game that I am so happy to see getting new life breathed yes. back into it because everything in War Machine back in the day was broken, so it was perfectly balanced <laughs> it's true <laughs> well obviously there are options these days you can be finely balanced these with your uh legacy is it legacy i think mm. it's called where everything's in there 
or you can mm. go for the new Prime Mark IV, you where can. it's it's going to be limited yeah. and therefore yeah. not finally balanced. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> we will find out we will find out uh, because new company new design ethos for both rules and miniatures so yeah gotta wait and see uh watch out for more stuff from steamforge and war machine uh here on tabletop over the next mm. couple of weeks as well so we've got stuff coming out this weekend but also be more stuff in the in future weeks so keep <laughs> them out for more and we'll we'll dive in and have some fun uh, yeah. don't forget if you want to win one of those uh because they are limited geographically make sure that you Ooh. can because I don't want to have to turn around after you've won it and go, no, you can't have it. <laughs> no shiny right. toy for you. Countries are listed in the thing yeah. blue. <laughs> and if you want to win, just include Brian Blessed's Troll Bloods in your comment. <laughs> <laughs> That's Brian Blessed's Troll Bloods. That's what I'll be looking for to make sure that you are wanting a copy of War Machine Mark II. It's, oh, it's almost, it's almost like a life. safe word, the one thing you would very rarely say. <laughs> I say it more often than you think. I say it all the time. <laughs> Speaking of Brian Blessed's Troll Bloods, uh, news from War Games Atlantic, and uh, they're co opt with uh, Mark Mondragon. Uh, uh -huh. There are more Eisenkern coming. Ooh. Um, this one is fascinating uh, because this time around it's the Valkyr Heavy Troopers. Oh. Oh which are sex. That's what they are. Let's <laughs> throw that one out. Um, so your standard Eisenkern are a bit yes. Stormtrooper-esque. Uh, the Valkyrs are up, up-gunned up and up-armoured uh, for getting in close and personal and uh, breaching all the gaps. Um, they have a, a choice, obviously, on the sprue of a couple of different head options. You've got the standard Eisenkern sort of... Um, style helm with mask, or they've got the more 15th, 16th century Teutonic German visor on there, uh, as you can see yeah, from the almost, test It's almost sci-fi like sci Templar helmet on there. Oh, no. Mm. Teutonic. Okay, okay. I, I will not clearly, argue the point. Jerry will know better than me. They're, they're clearly German. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's the name. Um, interesting sprue. If you have any of the originals, like me, um, there is a slight size difference uh, between the original Valkyr and the new ones. So some of the guns have been made a little bit chunkier. Uh, scaling has been changed ever so slightly, which means these fit with the Wargames Atlantic sci-fi range. So you could theoretically take Grognard's heads and stick them onto these bodies if you wanted. If you want a beautiful yep. plumage and bear skins, or alternatively, if you want to take some of the weapons or kit from the Valkyrie and then stick them on to the Ura or I suppose even to a certain extent the um, Reptilian Overlords uh, Jungle Fighters as well. All of these, uh, the, the scaling on the kits have, has been made uniform. Um, so these will be slightly smaller but maybe a little bit chunkier. Mm -hmm. What I should do is take some pictures of the new Eisenkern beside my old Eisenkern so people can tell. I might do that. Mm -hmm. If you're lucky. That'd be useful. If you're lucky, I will dig them out before this goes out and we'll include them down below. And if you're not lucky, then I'll do it at some point. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> I once will get say my hands I on love, them. love the, the feel of the weight that these have. It's mm. really, really beautiful. Nice Big work, chunky guys. Armor. Yeah. 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 The real question oh, will yes. be when am I getting my assault versions? Because oh. they did very briefly, very. Uh, very briefly from Dreamforge did release assault versions. Um, mm. Not many of them. It's not many people got them. There are renders out there with massive uh, Svihander swords and mm, stuff. So, cool. so um, mm. if you're looking to, uh, if you're looking to proxy in some Grey Knights, which is what I got my original mm. ones for, um, and then never ran them as Grey Knights ever because <laughs> <laughs> the dash came out. It was utter garbage. <laughs> uh, and then I just stopped playing 40k. Going, this is horseshit. Um, but <laughs> you could proxy them in as that, obviously. Uh, some point in the future, they may go death fieldies. Um, I just, I'm really looking forward to seeing what else comes uh, from mm -hmm. uh, the Mark Mondragon collaboration because mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. aliens, the aliens were only ever rendered. Uh, but I know they're working on the aliens. You so, kind of think they're doing them, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for a long time, there were Eisenkern, there were some massive vehicles, uh, 
but there wasn't anything to pit them against. They were a faction looking for an enemy in a game that didn't exist. It was a weird <laughs> spacey time. It's very Bill Bailey esque. <laughs> um, but yeah, the the idea of being able to put these on the table and, and throw them up against the aliens who had a really nice, um, feral alien design to them uh, would be absolutely fantastic. If nothing else, nice. I want my uh, I want my hopper stug. <laughs> so we were so close I, to redness. It's close. Talking of the um, the nightly element to them, mm. obviously you've talked about an assault version. I think it'd be really nice to see some people do some conversions with like swords and shields on mm. these, or like various melee weapons, because mm. um, you could do some really cool fo- cool stuff with that to turn them into kind of a- assault based stuff even before the. Yeah. The, the official sets come out. So. I don't know, I'm thinking all of them just rocking up with big techno sledgehammers. <laughs> That'd be cool. Could yeah. do. <laughs> no reason not to. No sledgehammers. The nice thing about massive mauls and war hammers is that they don't blunt because they come pre blunted, <laughs> um, which is why they're and always then good they backup weapons. Blunt you. Yeah, <laughs> they will yeah. liquefy you inside your armor. Yes, <laughs> like a harlequin's kiss, turning the <laughs> yeah. inside into the consistency <laughs> yeah. of soup. So that's yeah. always good for family fun. <laughs> but yeah, I absolutely love the Eisenkern. I always have loved the Eisenkern. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's really nice to see that they uh, are getting a, a whole new run at it um, mm-hmm. and haven't just disappeared because there's some really cracking stuff from the old days that just never never got a foothold and then just vanished. <laughs> and you, you find them occasionally on the internet and you go, oh, do you remember those? I wish I could get yeah. those. And uh, not everybody is me, oh. so not everybody did get those. I, I do um, hope they do revisit some of the vehicles because they were gorgeous back in the day. The problem with the vehicles, and I think Hudson has said this, is the amount of sprues it takes to make them. Mm. Right. They were not simple builds, I think. No, I, I remember. You were looking at like 10 sprues. So think of that. That's yeah. a year's worth of releases, pretty much. Wow. That's fair. That's so fair. It, maybe it's one that they'll look at them and once they've got the damned out of the way because there are a couple Mm -hmm. of vehicles coming for the damned Mm -hmm. maybe they'll be able to work out how to do it or maybe they'll kickstart the the vehicles i know so many people are looking ahead going oh you're releasing the valkyr but what about the valkyr assault and what about the aliens Mm -hmm. what about i think if people want to see those then they need to buy the ones that are out because if yeah support what's there current ones aren't being bought then there's no incentive Mm -hmm. For War Games Atlantic and Mark to actually yeah, go, yeah. well, we'll we'll invest in doing X, Y, and Z. Um, so that they That's need fair. to know that the the base is there before they can yeah, move the on to other is there things. For it. Yeah, mm-hmm. but he was hoping. Touch wood. Mm-hmm. Fingers crossed. We shall see. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Anywho, uh, <sighs> Ghost Watcher coming yes. from Black Sight. That's mm. very appropriate for this week, isn't it? It is, mm-hmm. yes. Spooky so, season is ending. This week be Halloween. Uh, obviously, that's there's, there's passed by now, but there's still mm-hmm. time to get some spooky stuff out over the weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, the folks over at Black Sight Studios have put together one of their zines, so they're doing lots of smaller games now. Uh, and this one is called Ghost Watcher. Um, it's themed off uh, popular uh, PC and console games at the moment where you go in and you try and do some ghost hunting and then try and escape before the ghost kills you and buy new equipment and go back in again, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and that has this kind of vibe to it. So when you dive in, it's for up to three players. Uh, you will simply need three ghost hunter miniatures, a ghost, uh, mm-hmm. and a two by two play space or a building. Could be just an MDF building or it could be a play mat. Luckily enough, Black Sight do plenty of those, and they also have their game Don't Look Back. So if you've got survivors and monsters from that, mm. then you're already sorted. Uh, but you could just use pawns if you wanted to and things from board games if you prefer. Castle um, Freeze website went back up this week. You they have all of those characters. Nice. They have so. Dean and Sam. Uh-huh. Perfect. Oh, but do can, them, can I also get the Scooby Gang? They do you have can. the Scooby Gang, and yeah. they also have Buffy and Willow. And Spike. Oh. So there's another three oh, ghost yeah. hunter thing. So you just there need to go. Uh, you, you could do the crossover for Supernatural and Scooby Doo. <laughs> I finally watched it. Seeing the Scooby Dang gang have a mental breakdown because Ghosts are real was hilarious. <laughs> it's great. Uh, but the game plays out over three different phases. Mm-hmm. In the first one, you kind of plan your <laughs> live stream and you go into different rooms and set things up. Yeah. In the second phase, you have to avoid the ghost. 
who is going to go from room to room trying to haunt you and take you out. And then in the third phase, you'll be able to spend all of your hard-earned money from your live streams uh, to buy new equipment so you can go on successive ghost hunts. Um, so it's a small little zine-style project that is perfect, obviously, for people who already have mm-hmm. Don't Look Back. But if you just want to try something out that's a little bit different, maybe go and check this out. And see it's fun. Think. So, yeah. Definitely sounds fun. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to very quickly <clears throat> Jack, since it's it. in, in the end of Halloween. Um, and... And I'll just throw this in since you're talking about ghosties and all that jazz. Uh, a couple of years ago at UKG, I met uh, Purple Lantern Games, a uh, Swedish company, who had come up with a game called The Presence. Ooh. They're coming close to starting fulfillment on it. The late pledge opened this week. Um, in it, you are essentially going through a house where you're attempting to work out what ghost is haunting it. Um, oh. There are different spirits. Some will help, some will hinder you. You don't know. It's it's like a deductive game of trying to work out what's haunting the place. Uh, oh. And, you know, can you can you work out as a group before the time runs out uh, or will the, the ghost sort of beat you to it? Uh, absolutely mm-hmm. fascinating little game. I'll just throw that one in. It's worth going and having a look at if, you fancy cooperative um, deductive board games. It's really, <laughs> really evocative. And the artwork, uh, I can't remember her name. It was a husband and wife or, or couple anyway, uh, wrote the game, but she did all the illustrations and artwork for uh, right. a lot of it. And it's absolutely stunning. Um, I, I love the little heart different. where it's a human hand and a skeleton hand. Yes. <laughs> it's very yeah. cute. Anyway, that's my I'll, little uh, I'll put a, a link thing. down below to that so people yeah. can check it out. I'll, I'll, cool I'll find the interview I did with them from UKG before they launched the there Kickstarter, so you'll be able to have a, a chance to see like the prototype board and stuff as well. Uh, but cool. anyway, cool. I digress. It's, it's just in my head because you were talking Worth about it. creeping through a haunted house. Um, and okay. also I got the notification that they're about to ship. <laughs> uh-huh. oh, so, so this one's coming to Jerry's. Oh, always. This is, this is how I play the game. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> We have a bit more news before we finish, and we're going off to the Underworlds for Whamster once more. Yeah, so uh, Warhammer Underworlds coming up for pre-order this weekend. Uh, so you be able to get your hands on the core game set for that, which we've talked about in past shows. But alongside that, we're also going to be seeing two new warbands getting added into the mix, one for Seraphon and one for the followers of Nurgle. So the Seraphon slash uh, Lizardman warband that you're going to be getting your hands on is the Jaws of Itzel which is a new Saurus heavy warband rather than the skink based ones that we've seen previously. This comes with uh, Sunblood Crojax leading the way, who may remind people well, of a of particular uh, Saurus warrior from back mm. in the day in Warhammer the Old World. Mm. Um, so he's leading the way alongside Rotak and Solkar. Uh, and they are uh, not Klingons. They are... Um, <laughs> Uh, Soros warriors who are going to be delving into uh, Embergard in search of their lost uh, Slan Starmaster who was buried beneath the mines during a particular eventful earthquake and so they've been let loose to try and hunt him down and uh, yes, they are particularly vicious as you might have expected. You even get a nice little base full of lizards (laughs) and snakes who are going to aid you in your uh, various endeavours. Lizard swarms for the win. This, this feel that that looks like it should be part of like one of the old Pixar movies, like you know the Brave Little Toaster or something. <laughs> yes, a little bit, yeah, I suppose. But um, yes, heavy hitting Saurus and some uh, friendly liz- lizards to help you out on the way. Very vicious mm-hmm. warman there. On the other side of things, uh, we also have uh, the Nurgle warband, which is Grandfather's Gardeners. Um, so whereas the Jaws of Itzel is a warband focused around just going in smashing face, um, the Grandfather's Gardeners are a slightly more uh, sneaky warband working to kind of corrupt the tabletop rather than just out and out kill you. That'll come in time. They are led by Phlegmus wow. Potbelly, who actually has a pot in his belly. Yep. See that? See there? Yeah. Being Not just a clever a name. Yeah. yeah. There's a bell on the nose. Um, Even though he doesn't then, have one. <laughs> alongside him, we have a couple of plague bearers because you've got Slunge, which is just lovely, and uh, Maggoty Stroog, 
Jesus, the names. <laughs> uh, I mean, whoever is making them is these names is just trying to gross you out. Yeah. And the bug-eyed drip terrace. I really love the character. The one just before this, that guy, uh, the guy with the um, the bug on his back, the, who's pushed its proboscis through his head. It's like he's got his a mouth. Tank. Yeah. And then he's he's birthing one as well beneath, so it's just perfectly gross, yeah. which is gorgeous. It is the best, yeah. Um, Th- this is so like cool. the fungus zombie but bug. Yes. And this is exactly why Warhammer Underworld's models are so good, because the, clearly the sculptors get to have a lot of fun with them. Oh, they're, they they're horrifying. Them. Yeah. Uh, and then last but not least, because you can't have a Warhammer Underworld's Warband without something cute, we also have Squat. The uh, plague fly. <laughs> Squirt. It's the noise, noise he makes when you step on him. Yes. <laughs> He'll be going around spreading all kinds of filth and disease on the tabletop. So, yeah, these Warbands will be coming out to support the new edition of the game. Uh, so you're going to have effectively four full new mm. Warbands alongside all of the other ones. I think the 16 extra ones from the past that have been brought back, as we looked at in a previous show. And, uh, yeah. They'll be coming alongside two new rival decks as well that are themed towards them, but you could obviously use them with other warbands as well if you preferred. But nice new stuff for Warhammer Underworlds, some really nice new models. And uh, if you've ever been tempted by Warhammer Age of Sigma, but you don't want to buy a full army, I would highly suggest doing something like Warhammer Underworlds because you get to get like the snapshot of a faction mm-hmm. in three or four models mm. and have some fun painting them, and then you don't feel obliged to go and off and build a whole bunch of extra stuff if you don't want to. Um, so it's a good game for that. Uh, if you're a hobbyist as well as a uh, a hobbyist and collector as well as a game. So yes, very good stuff there. Mm. Sweet to the beat. Mm. Speaking of hobby, mm-hmm. I think we've had enough news. Uh, so this week, Warren and Justin jumped into the studio to get involved with some hobby for Terrain Fest. Okay, guys, myself and Warren are here for Terrain Fest because it is time to get stuck in to the builds for this year. So... Yes. We are going Armored Clash. I have a little bit of a thing for the smaller scales. Have had for this last couple of years. Legion Imperialis completely whoa, got me going on it. <laughs> um, Armored Clash, I'll be honest, has really got me going on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and you had built a table for the Armored Clash uh, demo. Yes, the, the I did. Demonstration in the how to play. Yeah. It, if we have a quick look, there was, you see, so you put together these. Yes. Okay. Obviously, the most spectacular building in the entire thing was mine. I built that. And John painted it. Well, uh, uh, yeah, John channeled my inner <laughs> awesomeness. <laughs> but anyway, Justin, uh, while, it looked, while it looked great, hmm. okay, Terrain Fest is an opportunity to go, m- go a little bit mad. Yeah, upgrade. Right? So I have an idea. So, of course, you know, Terrain Fest is all about doing what you want to do. Except in Justin's case, where it's doing what I want them to do. I want them to do fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so, this should be fun. No, this will be fun. This will be fun. I, whenever I was looking at what you had built, started to get visions of kind of like a London Thames mm. kind of a thing going on. Yeah, well, right? I mean, what I built was functional. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. we want but, I mean, a bit with, more. With all the wee uh, 3D printed spires and stuff added to it, um, I really started to get that that sense of um, uh, London. Now, the starter set, the first two factions were Empire and Crown. So Crown, or you're, you're almost like your British Empire, mm-hmm. and then Empire is like your Far Eastern guys, mm-hmm. right? So um, I thought to myself, we could uh, run a couple of projects. Yes. So we'll do a battle where the Empire are attacking the Crown, mm-hmm. and we'll do one where the Crown are attacking the Empire. Yeah, so this is, like I said last week in the Weekender, a tale of two tables. It's a tale of two tables, is right. So um, we'll come on to the other one next week, um, but this week, let's get a start on this one. Yeah, okay, now, so where do we begin? Well, I think we begin by discussing a few constraints Okay. okay. I think it's always worth putting a few constraints in place because uh, that will help focus the mind. Hmm. Okay. Now, you know I love big, complicated gaming tables and we've, the likes. We've had this argument for years. You do cinematic. Yes. I do gamery. But um, in recent years, I, uh, obviously, we've had the introduction of gaming mats. Mm-hmm. 
and I like the storage ability of them, okay? I like the fact that it can store. And I think if anybody was going to try and follow these concepts that we'll take on this table at home, I think it would be only fair for us to try and keep an eye on the storage situation that they end up with at the end. Okay. Fair. So I want to use a gaming mat at the heart of this. Okay. Okay. So that's that's your base bones. Well, yeah. I'm gonna. I'm. Gonna, I think we'll start from a gaming mat. Okay. I don't want to build a big six by four table that ultimately has to be stored in in one piece and take up a lot of space. I remember the dark days. Yes. We we've, we've done plenty of them. I want to try something new here, right? And I think we should go fully destructive. So here's what I'm thinking. This is a gaming mat from. Uh, Gale Force Nine. Gale Force Nine. Yes. Now it's one. Of, it's a double sided gaming mat, so it's got grass on the other side. Okay. Um, but this is the side I'm interested in. It's scaled for Flames of War, so it's kind of your 15 mil scale. Yeah. But it, it's small enough. There is nothing so specific on here that you can't rescale slightly and push the limits. Well, the the beauty of it. The beauty of it is um, Imperialis Armored Clash. The, these kinds of games, they are uh, they're heroic enough that um, you have quite a bit of scope actually in the the scale end of things. You can push the scales up a little bit, you can pull them down a little bit, and it'll still it'll still marry in quite well. But I looked at this and I thought to myself, right, Justin, we're going to cut it up. I think blades. Okay? So that's what the water mat is out for. I think if we're doing a London inspired kind of a thing, mm -hmm. what do I think of? The River Thames, bridges. Yeah. And the city districts. And the city districts, yeah. So I think we will cut out this central channel here and here. Now remember, it's just an inspired by. We're not out to to make the introduction to East Enders or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, so we don't need to put in the O2. Yeah, we don't need any O2 arenas or anything like that. So we'll cut this out and we're just going to cut into the mat. I want to see what kind of a job we can make of it if we cut the mat. Now that will be razor sharp craft knives changing the blade after every one or two cuts. Oh, don't worry. I, I have set aside a full pack. Okay. One suggestion. So this has given us our main river, right? Yes. Right. I think we should also channel out at least one of these yep. for a small side inlet. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think that's a good idea. If we're taking this as a kind of like a, a snapshot of a crown city of some sort, mm -hmm. right? I was coming up with a list of districts. I thought to myself, what if we do work out what kind of districts you might see, mm -hmm. and then we can place them and work out uh, in advance the kind of districts, and then we can adjust what we're doing, the type of terrain that we build and stuff, mm -hmm. to meet the needs of what we're, what we're looking at for each area. It also gives you a, a tactical snapshot, because the terrain in each section is going to be very different. So how you're going to play in each section will possibly change up. Well, we hope so. Hope we so, hope yeah. so. So what I was thinking was, um, what you would typically find is a financial district. Yep, all the bankers. Government district. Of course. Palace. You might like, like you, you find Buckingham Palace or yep. the, the Tower of London and, and stuff like that. Yep. Change out a letter on the anchor's word. Um, parks, parkland. Mm -hmm. You know, like, um, all right, it's New York, but New York has Central Park. And London has, what do you call the big park? In Hyde London? Park. Hyde Park, yeah. I don't know how I remember this stuff. Uh -huh. And then you would have a, a, the Docklands. Yes. So, you know, obviously if you're on the, the river, the, the, there's a po possibility of doing a, a Docklands refinery kind of more industrial kind of area. True. One section, though, you'll have historical sites in any major city that's been around for years. Yes. So maybe Castle, Tower, or something like that. So a, kind of like a Tower of London kind of a thing yeah. where you still had the thousand-year-old walls or something like that. Yeah, still something that, that blends it in. Historical cities will always have those aspects still in there. And that is the that is something well worth keeping in mind in building terrain for these particular kind, kind of games, especially Armored Clash. So Armored Clash is loosely based in our history, mm -hmm. okay? 
Um, uh, unlike Imperialis, which is like 30 something odd thousand years in the future. Yeah, go nuts. So you can go nuts in one end um, with, with the, your far, far future stuff mm -hmm. because nobody knows what's going to be out there. But you can also go nuts whenever you go to kind of this kind of thing because you have a blend of the modern and the historical. Yeah, you're going to have that one guy coming up going, uh, excuse me, that's a listed building. But it gives us opportunities to mix historical stuff in with it. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about it, Armored Clash is not too different from today. It's We still preserve the historical, but you have an overriding um, kind of influence of whatever our main resource is. And our main resource is obviously like oil and mm -hmm. power, right? Um, within the dystopian age, they have their, their kind of main resource. Yeah, their element X. Yes. Um, uh, so you can still blend the historical into it, which gives us an option for a bit, a bit of 3D printing, a bit of digging out some of the older historical terrain mm -hmm. and m mixing it in. Right, next step. Mm -hmm. huh. We made a map. We made a map. So I probably need to turn this around. Excuse my handwriting. Worst handwriting in the world, okay? But this is that. the map. So here's the water, okay? Mm -hmm. And then here's our segments. So what I'm thinking is we have a uh, old tower, castly kind of thing here. Mm -hmm. Just just need a piece of it. And that will be here on the map. If you just watch, I can kind of show you. So that will be here. Do you know what? Let's change this round because okay. rotate. If we rotate this round, I can keep everything kind of. Aligned in your head? Aligned for the viewers at home. Okay. Right. So, so tower. tower will be here. Okay. Um, we're going to... Uh, uh, do you know what, Justin? I loved your idea, actually. Let's let's move the water into here. Yeah, so that's just a little channel. Because if you're in the Docklands, you're going to obviously need to be loading, unloading, yeah. tying up. So if we make that Docklands here, here, and this is a water channel running down there. Yep. Okay. And then what I would love to do is like a big tower bridge kind of thing. So where we put bridges, let's make the bridges super wide so you can actually do some good battles on it. I don't want them to be too choke pointy. Okay? Right. My recommendation then, so you have it marked here, but we've just turned that into a water channel. Yes. So if we just shunt it up so mm -hmm. that it's joining into the edge of here. Yes. So you're coming from your docklands here and into here, which you're marked as financial. financial district. Yeah. Would so that make sense? I think it would. So we'll we'll move your kind of tower bridge to that kind of area, right? right? And if we make it about what? Say this wide? Don't know. Don't know. We'll see. Um, when we start playing with the kit, because what we're going to do is we're going to play with some of the Armored Clash kits mm. to, to make the basics of this. Moving on up, Justin, I think what we'll do is we'll put a nice big park in the middle with an ornate bridge joining the park as okay. well, possibly, right? Right. Now, nice thing for this, Matt. We're mm -hmm. cutting it, right? Yeah. Other side's green. Parks yes. are green. Yes. So if we trim out this and then just flip it over, yeah. we'll get a park. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. This will be cut away, but I think we'll do a bridge here and a bridge here. And by doing those bridges, you then have um, almost like a loop that you can take to go around the table, okay, um, with a potential. We'll make this bridge quite, quite narrow. This one can be choke pointy because it'll be kind of um, more ornate, more of a footbridge kind yeah. of a thing. Yeah. Okay. Now, one other place you may want just something is, so if we don't take this all the way to the back or put something on top so that the back end you can hook up in around into this little dead area. Yeah, so, yeah. So some ways across. So like actual docks. Yeah, on that. Okay, yep. So moving over to here then, mm -hmm. we will do government stuff there, government stuff over here, and then this gives us the opportunity to turn this into the palace, mm -hmm. right? Um, I am very tempted to cut into the heart of this as well and flip it for some greenery. Because again, a palace, it might have like a nice palatial garden. Mm -hmm. We will see. We will see. Um, it, it, it all comes down to um, having some flexibility as we as we move forward on it. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to cut it all out, okay? 
So that will allow us to roll the water mat underneath this mat. Mm -hmm. So we'll have uh, this will sit on top of the water mat. Yes. And then that gives us our water and this. However, I want to do another experiment, right? Um, I want these bits that we cut out, these city districts, I'd like to raise them up. Ah, uh, see, so you, your two point five D is coming out. You're wanting to add a little more depth yes. into it, a little want, bit more three D. One of the one of the downsides of the of the mats, and it, and it's, it's it's no criticism of the mat makers. You know, they're doing a beautiful job, but they are um, they are very flat, aren't they? They, they? they are. All right, you remember the old builds we used to do? We were always playing with height, okay. elevation, how things could be like. Is there a big central cliff coming through the table that's blocking line of sight? Yeah. You have to get up and over. Those challenges are kind of lost now with this. Yeah, so this is with us cutting this one up. This is an opportunity for us to have an experiment to see what options we have for adding in mm -hmm. that texture again. That 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 I'm not necessarily looking for elevations that are going to have a massive impact on gameplay. But I would like to have something that we could kind of pack up, store away in a box, mm. bring out, add on, set the mats on it. Yeah, okay. so, I mean, I, I get exactly where you're coming from, because the idea of just, all right, the thickness of this mat is what, about two mil? That yeah. kind of a step down into a river. If you go out to any city and look at the river, that's not the drop you have between the ground and where the water lands. Yeah. So, what I did... I did a bit of measurements. You okay. did math. I did some math. So I was doing some measurements to work out what the what the dimensions of these kinds of areas were. And then I added it all up and I got to four 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 centimeters. Okay? <laughs> now I then thought to myself, right, how do we raise that up? Now we were going to be using, or we are going to be using this we're going to be building some more buildings and uh, revamping a lot of the buildings and building the bridges and stuff yeah. out of this terrain set. Well, okay. the the key thing is, and our key challenge is going to be taking this set and ensuring that each building that we're building from it is going to fit with the theme of the section of the city that we're going into. Yeah. Now, the, one of the issues is right. There are quite a lot of repeaty kind of pieces on it. Okay. Um. But they're they're all a little bit big for the risers I want, and one of the issues and uh, I have is whenever you're trying to do um, risers for like an embankment or something like that, you want all the bits to be kind of similar. And my concern is that we pull all of the same piece out of this. Uh, so how many how many boxes does it take to do the entire thing, yeah. and what can you do with your leftovers? Like I ran a little calculation that if we use that piece, for example. Because it kind of looked ideal. Yeah, we get three you'd, in a box. Yeah, you'd need about thirteen boxes, um, which makes absolutely no sense. You know, ah. it's a yeah, because too, you, too you, pricey. It, it, yeah, it's 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 no makes no sense from uh from a cost perspective, but it also makes no sense from a you're you're taking a piece out of the the box that may affect how you build the building, so you're reducing the flexibility mm -hmm. of the terrain kit at yeah. the end of the day. I mean, take taking. A leftover component is fine. If you find you, like you have tons of, say, a certain type of wall leftover, yeah. and you want to refactor that into a future build, sure, that's leftovers mm. that you're then ensuring you're using it all. But, but start from scratch. To, yeah, buying to take a to single and, component. Yeah, no, to try and get a, a component it makes it makes very little sense. No, no. So I've moved away from that, and I thought to myself, right, I'm going to design something. I'm going to have a crack at designing something and printing it out in 3D. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I went to uh, the old Tinkercad. I feel like I'm doing challenge Annika chasing them. Yay. And I designed an embankment. Um, I think that's 20, is that 20 centimeters? I think it's 20 centimeters, right? Um, uh, which means uh, you're on a bed, you would print um, you'd print a whole bunch of them, actually, uh, on a bed. Standard bed, so, you get what? Eight or nine on? Uh, you get about ten on uh, to a standard bed, okay? Um, I designed a couple of different versions of it. 
Um, so I think you kept all the gray plain. I think the the black ones you printed have the. Right. So the black ones have little um, waste outputs. Yeah. And the sewage outflows. Uh, a single one and a triple one. Okay. And I designed them with a, like a little slotty kind of a thing, Justin. I was I thought, oh, I'm going to show off now so that they can actually slot into one another. So whenever we glue them, mm -hmm. there's wee kind of guidelines and things to, to help us put them together. Mm -hmm. So if you left those and we set this kind of along here, we start to get an idea of what we could be, uh, how we could look at increasing the increasing the elevation a little bit so if i do the same on the other side so it would be kind of like that and let's say that now i need to make some little specific pieces for corners and the likes but that's fine um as long as we have enough in to get a feel for the actual um, bulk of it, we can always then print out stuff to do the the specialist edges and things and corners and the likes. Well, the so, other design components you need right now. Mm -hmm. So you'll need an outside edge here. Yep. So this, but a clean face. Mm -hmm. You need your corner pieces. Yep. And for the middle of these. So some of these are pretty big. Yes, we need reinforcements. Mats are floppy. So what I would like you to do, Justin, whenever you come to build these, right, is uh, see if you can keep them kind of modular so that it's not one big piece that we have to, to store. So maybe glue two of these together mm -hmm. and make a piece, say that size. Yeah. And then another piece, say that size. Uh, and then, and then your make, final, your, make your corner piece. Your final piece with that size. And that way yep. we can kind of just stack them up and chuck them on top of a wardrobe or something. Yeah, on a shelf somewhere. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So when we cut this up, that uh, let's try to, to keep that in mind. Well, here's the thing. I would cut the mat into the full pieces that we're looking for, right? Mm -hmm. But whenever it comes to doing these, have the mat as a set-on piece for the top. Mm -hmm. Don't glue it to it. No, no. And then you're just building... That box frame. Yeah, so we could use um, a little bit of uh, um, either like a foam core board or cardboard yeah, or something card. like that, plastic yeah. card, to create these raised pieces. You're absolutely right. I'll create blank to go around the edges like that. Yep. And I'll create um, some little underneath pieces. Yeah, a couple, of, a couple of pillar components just so the center doesn't sag while you play. Yeah. Because, all right. What's the worst thing that could happen with this raising it up? Some big lug. Yeah, that would Punch their arm right down through it. That would be me. That would be me. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't even talking about you. <laughs> I, I have seen people at the gaming hall, mm -hmm. or at gaming days, and they're sitting like this the whole time on it, just yeah. digging the elbow in. It's it's why we like the, uh, the upholstery foam over the older stuff we used to use, because it would take the dent. Yes. So, there we have it. Justin, the next step is getting your very sharp razor blades out, Yep. getting this cut up, Yep. and then let's do doing a dry fit without these, mm -hmm. just a dry fit on top of the blue mat, mm -hmm. just to see um, how it looks. So we're going to, uh, That's we're getting the, the feel that we're after. That's grand, and then I have much clipping to do. Yes, so that update will come to you next week. So there we go, folks. Awesome stuff. Mm -hmm. I thought we were done having built one table, <laughs> for armor clash but no, more tables coming well i mean it, it's i'm excited for this one because it's a very different style of table to what we normally build mm -hmm. as long as it's playable <laughs> that is what i've been discussing with warren is he wants the epic cinematic i want it gameable mm. so a mi mixing of the two yeah it's sort of a blending mm -hmm. well let's see who wins that argument <laughs> uh, I'm sure we'll be revisiting this over the next week slash months mm -hmm. during Train Fest. Yep. So get your oar in. Explain to them why it needs to be playable. Because <laughs> not building dioramas here. No. It's not a railway layout for Lloyd. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, right. Uh, we have a couple of Kickstarters to finish mm -hmm. out this week's show. Um, yes. We're going to be starting off with one that's gaining a whole head of steam 
Oh, yeah. Trench Crusade. Oh, yes. Yeah. So Trench Crusade uh, from the folks at Factory Fortress Inc. Um, and are sort of coming to the tabletop with their insane grimdark alternative to uh, World War One, effectively. So in 1099, during a crusade, a blasphemous artifact was uncovered and hell has been unleashed on the earth. And now factions are fighting in an endless stalemate across trench-strewn battlefields for the gods, for the devil, and everything else between, and all the demons that have come out of the woodwork in the meantime. Um, it's all based on the artwork and design of Mike Francina, alongside the rules that have been developed by uh, Mordheim uh, aficionado creator father <laughs> Thomas uh, Pirinen uh, who has come on board to help with this alongside a whole host of amazing creators um, loads of sculptors have got involved like Doug Hamilton who a lot of people will know from uh, War Machine and Hordes uh, Saint Decent who does stuff in the 3D printing and the 3D sculpting uh, realm uh, as well as James Sheriff who's come on to help with a lot of the model design and, and all that kind of thing as well and the distribution of it all. So it's a big um, labor of love for a whole host of different people who have got involved to bring this game to life. And I think that's pretty much the kind of gist of this mm. project as a whole. It's a labor of love and a vision of a game and a range of miniatures that is being fed by the enthusiasm of a should we say rabid <laughs> audience who are absolutely yes. just nuts for this? Um, <clears throat> you can see John Blanche has got involved and a whole bunch of other people, Dave Gallagher as well. Um, one of the nice things about the game is that it is uh, driven by the artwork of Mike, but is at its heart a kit bashing conversion style game. So you mm. don't have to pick up all of these miniatures that you're seeing here. You can just get what you want from different ranges and just plug them all in. Um, but if you are looking to get your hands on some official mod uh, models, then there are a whole host of them as part of this Kickstarter project for you to get stuck into. Um, just before we get to the models, though, just mm -hmm. a quick word on the actual game itself. So, as I say, it comes from uh, Thomas uh, Pirinen, who is of uh, Mordheim fame, so loves mm -hmm. himself a little bit of a campaign. Uh, and that is at the heart of this game as well. You can go and get your hands on the completely free living rules for Trench Crusade right now over on their website um they will forever be free as well so uh even if you get yourself the um the physical rules you'll always be referring back to the living rule book as it grows and changes over time but those people are like well why would i buy the rule book because the rule book has a whole host of law and background and art from all of those very talented people in there as well so it's as much as a coffee table book as it is a uh, set of rules for you to be mm. playing the game with as well. Also, um, physical is always better. Yes, having something <laughs> in your hands to read is always much better than reading uh, off a screen. That uh, new book smell or that old book smell, Jerry? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the game itself uses a simple 2D6 system. Uh, 1 to 5 is a failure, 6 to something is a success, and then like 11 to 12, or it's like a 12 plus, sorry, is a, like an exceptional success. And that is used to drive all of the actions that you're doing in the game. In fact, you can see it there, um, but uh, alongside other things. But mm. uh, built into that is also the uh, special mechanics for blood and blessing in the game. So when enemies get damaged, but they're not, but not dead, they have blood tokens attached to them, and those blood tokens can be spent to boost your attacks against them in the future and give you bonus dice to your rolls. So it's a lot easier for you to get that six to eleven range, and then of course twelve plus if, as well if you are so lucky. But then you're also tagging blessings, which can be used to both uh, reinforce your abilities on the tabletop, but also protect you from harm. And then you can also use blood and blessings, as you might have expected, in order to fuel your nasty, terrible magics on the tabletop as you're fighting out your trench battles. Um, uh, and also maybe beseech the gods or something darker to potentially help you in your moments of uh, terror as you fight through these blood-soaked, mud-splattered trenches of this alternative World War I. Looks like an so alchemist yes, dares. <laughs> I'd have him. I do have him, actually, I think. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Inspiration I'm, I'm loving the horrific design of this. If you wanted some oh, alternate yeah. models for it, 
See, if you go and grab some of the Dark Souls board game miniatures, they would fit right in here. Yeah, yeah. yeah it'd also be very good options for that from there, definitely. Um, the game itself, as I say, is campaign-based. Mm-hmm. So you start off with a small warband, and from there you build it up over time, and you generate your characters and give them new abilities and all that kind of thing as you play mm-hmm. through. Um, but there is uh, a wealth of different options for you to choose from uh, when it comes to this. All of them inspired by like Grimdark, Morkborgian style heavy metal grim darkness um and also like world war one aesthetic as well so for example you have things like the bomb witch (laughs) who's a magic toting bomb wielder who would have thought that she would be yes (laughs) uh why do you need magic when you have explosives well exactly yeah it's just a different type of magic Mm. Uh, and then you have things like towering undead semi-conscious constructs that Hulk, hull, haul around, sorry, massive tank guns and all sorts of things to blow you away and, and everything else in between. There's definitely a feel of Mordheim to this in the way that it's all kind of been set up and designed. Um, so if you're familiar with that and you like that kind of brutal, brutality on the tabletop, you're going to get that showing in this game here as well, which is good to see. Um, and obviously lots of, uh, ways for you to go when it comes to, um, kit bashing and converting and making your own types of characters there are a whole host of different factions as well i mean we're seeing some of them here but there's trench pilgrims the heretic legions new antioch obviously going for that templar crusade vibe mm. court of the seven-headed serpent the sultanate of the iron wall so you've got that middle eastern influence in there Whoa. as well and the black grail as well there you go oh. artillery witches <laughs> <laughs> um the Black Grail there as well, so you've got your kind of knightly stuff in there too, which is quite nice. Um, when it comes to the campaign, you can get the miniatures either as uh, STL files, so you can get them digitally, so you can print them off by yourself. But if you prefer to go for physical miniatures, you can also go down the route of getting them sent your way by the folks at Only Games and, and um, My Mini Factory. So if you want to get your hands on them, you can do. Um, each faction has a full faction pack of miniatures for you to get your hands on, mm-hmm. um, which gives you way more than you need to build a starting warband. Um, so I think they come with like 10 to 12 miniatures per set as a whole currently. And obviously with 3D printing, that means you can just print out multiples of particular characters if you wanted to. Um, and obviously because it's a campaign game, you can rip their legs off and stick weird things on and all sorts of things in between as, as you go through, which is always good to do. Um, but if you're somebody who wants to start out smaller, they do what are called warband packs, which give you your first seven miniatures that you'll need to play through the beginning of a campaign all the way through to about the midpoint when you start to add more specialists in. And that's where you can sort of start off before diving deeper into one of these larger packs or something in the future. Because they're doing stuff and fulfillment through only games and um I have to be careful every time you say that name. Mm-hmm. With only games <laughs> and my mini factory, I would expect that a lot of this stuff is going to be available after the campaign. Mm. Ad infinitum. <laughs> so you don't feel like you have to go in and buy one of the larger packs of miniatures. You could just start off with a warband, get your hands on that, get that printed or get it physically, and then from there see where it takes you. Because the fact that the rules are always going to be free online and you can play through them right now, there's no reason why you can't just go in and start playing with a bunch of miniatures that you already have. As Justin said, if you've got some Dark Souls miniatures or something, Mm -hmm. play with them. Um, Have some fun with the game, see what you think of it, and then maybe dive in a little bit deeper if you like. But a lot of love for this, as you were saying, Jerry. Um, Mm. Some absolutely stunning sculpts from some insanely good creators who have done uh, uh, (laughs) the Lord's or the Devil's Mm. own work, I suppose, with these. And uh, absolutely gorgeous aesthetic for the game as a whole, really. So, Every yeah. time I look at these, there's always something new for me to go, wait, what the hell? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Is well. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Get your Ottoman Turks on the go. <laughs> the, the fact <laughs> that it's in cannon. World War One, mm-hmm. and then it's going wrong is great. Um, um, obviously, a couple of models have come out already for Trench Crusade, yes. um, and then other people got on board in a Mokborg style of, as well, because um, mm-hmm. so, I know Boris is currently sculpting some. As well. Oh. So Westville, you're going to be doing some. But you can just go and grab a box of World War One Germans or British or yep. French or whatever from mm-hmm. War Games Atlantic. And then a cultist pack 
uh, from, from North Star, North Star yeah. and that'll give you a load of medieval style weaponry and big hoods and stuff. Yes. And you can just start yeah. mixing and matching. So you end up with your, yeah, you know, World War One style, uh, people with a whole host of weapons and then mm. break out some putty, uh, Millie pot, green stuff, brown stuff. They're all your friend. Uh, brown stuff is the best of those, by the way, but Millie pot is a, a close second. Um, and just add, you know, ragged capes or whatever across them, or if you need to mask some joins here and there, or add tentacle blims, uh, these are all doable. That um, amalgam is insane. It's good, isn't it? <laughs> I think the the best thing Flesh these guys horror. are doing is, you know, all the demons, because it's so out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's some gorgeous stuff. Good to have. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Always good to have. There you go. Uh, Versions and kit bashing. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, custom miniatures will always be completely legitimate. Yes, there you mm. go. <laughs> Add-ons and more coming as part of this as well. So if you want to add in particular characters, you can. I think they're also working on stretch goals as well. Mm. Um, so there's plenty more for you to dive into on that front. Um, Bath of they have said that the they have said that the they have said that the book itself uh may take a little bit more time to mm. get sent out compared to things like the miniatures mm -hmm. uh, mainly because as i said it's a labor of love and they want to give their artists as much time as possible in order to make it a reality so you may get that slightly later in the process but the rules are all available online mm. anyway so yeah you dive um, and get that when you, you get it so. you're getting the best version of it exactly yeah so so yeah and mm. also means that in the meantime you can play test the game so you think of it, and then that will help them in their final printing of the book itself. <laughs> yes, I, I love, love that. that. Very good. Yes, <laughs> pledge. There's nothing to do with actual cost, but everything to do with the aesthetic of the number. Yes, yeah. I'm having flashbacks to, to the Thunderhawk. <laughs> <laughs> How much does it cost? Yeah. Forty thousand pennies. Ah. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Yeah. Cracking stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's the little smaller mini factions. You're beginning war bands as well if you're not after the yep. whole kit caboodle. Uh, mm -hmm. New Antioch is really calling out to me. Yeah, it's super cool. Yeah, some very very nice stuff in here. Give me the Heretic yeah. Legion. You had yeah. me at artillery witch. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, just saying. Yeah. Uh, I have been offended in that general direction. <laughs> mm, cracking stuff. Um, yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah, and. Because the community is already massively behind that, uh, it's already uh, going great guns. It is. You pardon the pun, or great gun witches. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. funded, funded to the hilt uh, and mm -hmm. beyond. And there are eleven days left on it. So, fancy yep. a bit awesome. of trench crusading? Uh, get involved with that. Also, yep. it means if you've been playing around in World War One madness with things like Welcome to Doggerland and stuff, you. You'll have miniatures that can bounce between two different systems mm -hmm. as well. So mm -hmm. get more yeah, bang for your back that way. Yeah. And all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cracking. Right. Mm -hmm. Once more into the historic breach, but this time properly. Properly <laughs> historic. No weirdness. With going lovely on. uniforms and everything else in between. Yes. Um, so Piano War Games uh, are back with possibly the best collection of Napoleonic miniatures on the market currently. Near to the Perrys, mm. maybe. Maybe Ooh, better. Careful. Oh. careful. <laughs> I'd say better. You're going to have to pick I your hell to die on. I yeah. prefer the so, uh, aesthetic he has. I will, I will die on this one then. Yeah. So these come from Lucas Luber, who is back for, again, a little bit of a passion project almost, with the part two of the Danube campaign. This is looking to build on their collection of miniatures for uh, the Napoleonic era, mm -hmm. 19, 1809, sorry, and the War of the Fifth Coalition, and adding in even more French and Austrian miniatures into the mix for you to build up your armies for this particular period. So, um, as I say, based around the Danube campaign, uh, but very much inspired by trying to represent and recreate those iconic moments from mm. the artwork and the books and the tales of the time. So as an example, they've said that they've drawn on things like Lascelles' final charge at Wagram, General Dawson's stoic display at Aspen, Essling, or Bezier's cavalry attack at both of those particular battles. Um, 
and it's trying to bring to, to life those particular moments from this period rather than it just being a retelling of the stuff that we know from Waterloo and mm-hmm. the Peninsula campaign and all that kind of thing as well. So it's taking things a little bit of a different direction and bringing that stuff to life that was part of it's not always childhood and what they'd learned. Yeah, so, it's not always yeah. Britain and France, Britain so, and France, Britain exactly. and France. There were an awful lot of other nations yeah. involved. There were. <laughs> it was a world war very much in, yeah. in its own right. Mm. So, um, And once again, returning to this period and creating just astonishingly good Napoleonic miniatures. Mm. Um, I think something has to be said about the painting of these by Stephen Huber, who has done a – Stefan Huber, who has done an absolutely mm. fantastic job mm. on these, bringing them to life. Um, but there are dozens and dozens. I think it's 200 more miniatures that they've designed Wow! for both the French and the Austrians. Yeah, like these guys don't rest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sleepers for the week, uh, I'm guessing. Yeah, um, and there are loads of new stuff for the French, including the great coats, as you can see there. Yeah, loads covered of covered shackles as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they're all available uh, in a similar way to the last campaign. They're all available as digital offerings. So if you want to get your hands on STL files, you can do. Um, <laughs> and what's nice about those is that they can be rescaled really easily. So they have actually done rescaling of these down to uh, like uh, 10 through to 15 mil. Mm. So you can have them alongside stuff for um, you know epic battles if you want to take them down into the, the Warlord range. If you want to do them at true 15s, you can. Heroic and everywhere 10 in between, pretty much. <laughs> I wonder what would happen uh, if you scaled them down to like 6 mil. <clears throat> it'd probably be all right, to be honest. But mm. <laughs> you, 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 you might you lose something. Very brittle. But, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That and uh, trying to actually glue bits on because I'm seeing how they're broken down here could be fun. Well, you'd obviously build them. Oh, you build them and then scale them down at that scale point. Scale them down. Yeah. 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 Maybe. Uh, and print them in that sense. But. Um, they also do these as physical miniatures as well. Yay. So if you don't want to get them in the ones and zeros, as Jay would say, you can get them in good old fashioned metal. Metal, oh. like God intended. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll be, you'll be able to build big 28 mil metal armies of these. And I mean, I think the miniatures speak for themselves, to be honest. The the, the painting on them is gorgeous. The, the miniatures themselves, the detail on them is phenomenal. The... The fact that even the basic core troops all feel like in individual, unique mm. soldiers is gorgeous. Um, and then all of the additional work gone into making all of the characters feel dynamic and unique is great. The fact that the horses are, for the most part, in the cavalry anyway, charging forward is good. Alongside all of your generals directing things with their swords and hats and everything is just wonderful. Um, so if you're somebody who's maybe about running. this... Yeah, Sweet. It's so good. So if you're somebody who's maybe picked had a look at this particular period of history or and the Napoleonic era, and you thought, oh, it'd be really funny if there were models to suit that. <laughs> They've done it, <laughs> and in spades. Um, I also got to say, it's a real lesson in how to show off a really f- good Kickstarter because they have all of the original miniatures, all of the renders, mm. and then painted finished miniatures as well. Mm-hmm. So taking your time to d- show that off, I think, is really key. Um, for people who are backing campaigns like this, that you don't just see something that's kind of an idea. I mean, obviously that that is the case with some miniatures, obviously, but mm. to but actually like, see the final product in 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 people's hands and painted, I think, is a great bonus. Like, and then also the cinematic shots as well, just to show you what it could look like when it hits your tabletops. I think, is yeah. Um. So yeah, uh, all available currently as part of this campaign. Uh, mm, ridiculously Danny funded by the look of it. Yes, funded very well. Um, they also have uh, add-ons uh, and such that will allow you to get all the miniatures from their previous campaigns, so part one and all of the other stuff they've done, like the um, the civilian uprisings mm. in the in the Alps and everything as well, has all been sort of catered to, which is good. So if you're diving into that, you've got that covered as well. And I have no doubt that Lucas will be back with even more miniatures in the future because. I think this is a passion project that will never die. <laughs> and There's I hope it never so much more doesn't. to do. I yeah, bet Jam yeah. Scott has already been in here throwing money Probably. at us. Probably. Have you, Jam? Yeah. Have but, you? But uh, absolutely stunning collection of miniatures. And, That's uh, the French. Definitely worth having a look at. Mm. Yeah, now we're that just getting just the into French. the Austrians. <laughs> that was half. Mother that was yeah. half wow. of this. As I say, 200-odd miniatures. 
yeah. um, they've done for this. Definitely one for yeah. folks at home to go and have a scroll through themselves. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. absolutely belter, mm-hmm. as they would say in France. Also, great thing, <laughs> if you cover all your troops in great coats, that's less uniform you have to paint. Yeah, so <laughs> there's no excuse, really. Yeah. <laughs> the best time well, to fight it's a, it's a great, winter. great coat, so you prime it and you're almost there. Yeah, very true, yeah. Great coats and smaller scale, even less painting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, spread, but bigger battlefield, technically, so more to print. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that'll make much of a difference. There's yeah. a, a ton of fun to be had in here really and is. a really expansive set. Like you say, this is the part two. So coupled with the first part, if you were after something like a, a full Austrian army or French for the, the Fifth Coalition Wars, yeah, then you have this in spades. Uh, I don't think there's going to be much left that you will need for this particular set of no. uh, uh, battles and campaigns. Um, they're more or less totally covered between this and his existing range. So, so it's good to get in yep. there like a hairy, scary bear. <laughs> I, I'm going back through Napoleonic battle systems at the moment. I think soldiers of Napoleon is what I'm going to be plumping for. Fair enough. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And now I'm thinking, because I'm planning on doing it using Wi-Fi's 10 mil, but and then ah. I see these and I'm going, mm, it looks like, <laughs> but also my table would need to be enormous, an enormous yeah. table. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, great stuff there mm-hmm. from, uh, from Lucas mm. and Piano War Games that do, I'm going to say it, best of Polionics. <laughs> Spend the colors to the mass. Yeah. 16 days left, already funded. Uh, jump right in, fill your boots, get some Austrians. It's all good, clean family fun. Right, that wraps us up for another week. We shall return next week for more of the same. We will. Or on Sunday morning, uh, where we'll be talking absolute nonsense about hobby. <laughs> Probably. Yours and ours. Uh, you can join us over at ontabletop.com for that, if you fancy it. And if you're not already a cultist, you can sign up for a 30-day trial. Uh, kick the tires, walk around, see what else is going on. There might be a Peter Dennis interview somewhere. Someday. In the future. Yeah. Someday. <laughs> I swear to God, I will put it up myself and not tell anybody. <laughs> right. Time to go. Until next week, have a great week of gaming. Bye-bye. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.